ngishimira birumvikana iyo byarenze aha ngaha bikajya hanze yarwo nukuvuga ngo ni ibintu biba biryoshye ariko nabivuga ni ibintu byo kwishimira cyane ni namahirwe kandi aza yiyongera kubindi ni namahirwe aza yiyongera kubindi cyane ko usibye kuba twebwe twabigeze nkuko bavugaga abari namahirwe kubandi ngarutse wenda ku rubyiruko cyane ko ari bo turi turi kureba ni nabi gihugu gihanze amaso ubona ya mbere twabashije kugera mu buryo butandukanye haba mu bukungu haba mu bindi byiciro bitandukanye birumvikana ko hari ababigizemo uruhare abajene urubyiruko muri rusange ubona aya mahirwe dufite cyangwa se ibi byagezweho kubisigasira twabihangije na kwijana yuko ababikoze barya baba bagasinzira murakoze wenda nabanza nkagira icyo mvuga ko akubaka ni muri mutoroshye ugoye cyane cyane no tubizane ku Rwanda imyaka 30 ishize navuga ngo imvune abakuru babigizemo bakinafite nungu w'iryo shyaka ko kwitanga bagifite nungu ni ibintu twe nk'urubyiruko turewe bungu tukabihagaciro na mbere yuko tuvuga ngo tugiye gusigasira turabanza tukabihagaciro kandi tukanabigiraho kuko ntango twavuga ngo baragiye baracyahari nabantu nataga nk'urugero nka His Excellency nubigaruka aho cyana tubwira ngo abakuru hari uruhare rwabo bagize urubyiruko ubu ni mwebwe iya bitubwira kuri ya rero abazi neza ko hariho platform ihuza urubyiruko nabo bakuru n'umundi bagenda babikora kugira ngo urubyiruko nabo go rube integrated Nimba tuvuga iterambere ry'ubukungu ha urubyiruko ruhabwa umwanya kugira ngo rutangire ruganire ku by'ubukungu bitandukanye batangire batumirwe nabo bumve ubukungu bw'u Rwanda ruragera aha ngaha ikindi cyo twabashije gukora dore namwe ndetse hakana abantu ikintu navuga ngo cya capacity building aho igihugu kicara kikavuga ngo uru rubyiruko kugira ngo ruzabashe wenda ngarutse ku byo yarambaje ruzabashe navuga ngo gusimbukura urukiramende ngizi skills bakeneye hakaba ha mabursa atandukanye mu mayini zafta hakaba ibintu byinshi bitandukanye navuga ngo urubyiruko turi ready ndetse twanatangiye no kubyerekana natanze ingero zitandukanye z'abajoni batanye imishinga itandukanye hari nabandi bajoni benshi bari mu bari mu buyobozi kandi ubona babikora neza rero navuga ngo abakuru ntanga ari kuryama ngo basinzire ahubwo bakomeze badufashe e nicyo njewe navuga kuko bavuze ngo bararyanye barasinze tukiri kubigiraho kuko nta abaye bavuga mu kinyarwanda ngo nta mwana ukura ngo ahite yuzuri ngobyi uko turi gukura izo mbaraga dufite bakomeze badushyigikire uko bakomeza badushyigikira ko turi kwigira ku birenge byiza uko badushyigikira nta kabuza hari gye kizagera natwe tukababwira ngo navuga ngiye result y'ibyo mwatwubatse mariko tura hari n'ubu twatangiye no gukora wenda dufasha urugero nko kuri abajene twigeze kubivuga hari abajene bafite ibikorwa bitandukanye abafite imyenda bakorera hano mu Rwanda hari aba abafite ubukorikori butandukanye babukora hano mu Rwanda bajyanye muri Rwanda day bajyanye kumurika hanze ubona amahirwe hari urugero yine Rwanda day ibi ari amahirwe kubashaka kujyayo uhereye hano mu Rwanda bashobora kujyana ibicuruzwa byabo kure ubona amahirwe yahawe byumwe hari ko ahari ku banyarwanda byumwe hari ko urubyiruko urubyiruko bifiteho amakuru ahagije ku buryo bashobora kuvuga bati iri ni opportunity nayibonye hari Rwanda day igiye kuba igiye kubera Washington kandi ndu mucuruzi mpora ibi ngibi reka ngire iyi initiative yo kuvuga ngo reka uyu niwe mwanya wanje mbonye wo kumurika wo kwagura ikorwa byawe bya by'umuntu kugiti ke afite ubona navuga ngo uko gukanguka uko gukoresha gukoresha amahirwe igihugu cyatanze urubyiruko rubyifitemo koko Murakoze nongera kugaruka nanone kuri ya mentorship ntango urubyiruko navuga ngo turicaye baradutereranye nitwe twishakira buri kintu cyose navuga hari ama navuga hari ama program mesha tandukanye harategurwa ni imbuto harategurwa na ministeri y'urubyiruko ni terambere ry'ubuhanzi nategurwa n'abandi bafatanya bikorwa batandukanye aho usanga urubyiruko ba building capacity yabo kugira ngo umenye ngo niba ndi gukora iby'imideli Niki gikenewe ku isoko bya hari ya Washington kuko ibyo uzajyana muri Ghana ibyo uzajyana muri Washington ibyo uzajyana mu Bufaransa biratandukanye ibyo bintu bitandukanye rero bikorerwa urubyiruko na mbere yuko bavuga ngo barava mu Rwanda cyangwa nabari no mu Rwanda so kuvuga ngo wenda ngo ntabage ngo muri Rwanda day gusa usanga barakangutse hajya habaho amanama menshi atandukanye no mu Rwanda ho usanga 
urubyiruko rushishikarizwa kuvuga bakajya nko muri car free zone bagatangira gushyiraho ibyo bakora bitandukanye bafite mu mutwe ngo abandi bo bashyitsi dufite mu Rwanda nimba urubyiruko rubasha gutekereza ngo abandi bo bashyitsi dufite ngibi byo bakunda nabajya muri Rwanda de ntekereza ntashidikanya ko nubundi yo capacity urubyiruko rurayifite ntango ngo kawe mu wajya ni ikintu zineza ko kiri mo preferred n'abanyafrika kandi ugiye no no kwisoko mpuza mahanga Washington ngo habure iyo 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 navuga iyo capacity yo kwadrasting kuri market navuga rero ko ibyinshi tubikesha program ziza z'ubuyobozi buba bwatekereje mbere bukavuga ngo uru rubyiruko ko rugiye hariya bari kumva koko kiri soko ritandukanye n'iryo basize mu Rwanda navuga urubyiruko rufite iyo capacity kandi baracyana dufasha mu kwitwubaka mu mukozi Yego reka mutwe mbiriri tujye mu karuhuko gatoya ariko kandi ndukomeza no kubararikira kuza gukurikira umuhango nyirizina wa Rwanda Day tureba ibirimo birabera yo byose In the last 5 years more than 27000 students have graduated with the valuable support of the government yet shockingly this accounts for only 30% of students who truly need it what a huge gap Is there anything you can do about it? Yego. Join the Minuza challenge and become a catalyst for change in Rwandan education. Virorosh, your contribution matters. Just $30 from one person can provide living allowance for a deserving student. Envision this impact. If 100 people each contribute $30, we can cover a year's tuition for four students. And with a thousand contributors, we can fund a full degree for 15 students. You can make a lasting impact. For those who have graduated with government support, it's time to give back. If you didn't, you can still make a significant difference by contributing towards the Minusa challenge and helping secure a brighter future for another Rwandan. Your contributions can be made via brd.rw. Together, we can bridge the education gap and shape a brighter future for Rwanda. to be here at Rwanda Day today. At Ecobank, we're very thrilled to be part of this uh, event. We are positioning ourselves as an employer. We are here to meet the Rwandan community, the diaspora, to showcase some of the career opportunities that we have as an employer. We also want to discuss new trends uh, in the financial sector and give advice to the youth on uh, what skills to develop that are needed uh, uh, in the financial sector in Rwanda. As you know, Rwanda has positioned itself as a financial center for Africa, so we're very excited that we can have the youth and, and the Rwandan diaspora be part of this growth and contribute to the economic development of our country. We're also offering very good products uh, for the diaspora where they can invest in Rwanda through uh, us, Well, they can also um, remit funds to their families from wherever they are, in the US, Canada, in Europe. We offer very different platforms, uh, digital platforms, that ensure that they don't have to be physical uh, at, in Rwanda for them to open accounts, for them to make payments. We offer very good mortgage uh, facilities for the diaspora that enables them to invest uh, and, and uh, buy houses and, and purchase properties and also by contributing to the economic development of the country. Turimo kuganira ku gikorwa cya Rwanda Day kirimo kubera Washington DC mu gihugu cya Leta z'umwe cya Amerika aho abanyarwanda n'inshuti z'u Rwanda bahuriye kugira ngo baganire baganire n'umukuru w'igihugu baganire ku gihugu baganira aho kiva naho kirimo kwerekeza twagiye tubona impumeko yabari Washington uko bishimiye uko basobanura Rwanda Day cyari cyo turimo rero kubiganiraho ariko twitsa cyane ku rubyiruko ku uko rubyiruko rwiteguye gufata kubakira kuri uyu musingi abakuru bashyizeho mutesi nagira ngo ngaruke kuri gahunda ya tumweresi akenshi yo bavuze tumweresi mu bantu bayumva cyangwa se bayumva bigoranye n'urubyiruko rurimo izi mbaraga z'igihugu kandi zubaka zirimo zirumvi gahunda ya tumweresi gute Murakoze uh, wenda nagaruka no kuri imwe uh, muri speech ya, mini, ya ministre w'ubuzima kugira ngo harabare bamubajije bati se ministre eh, tubigenze dute urubyiruko ntago nsubira cyane mu byo yavuze ariko numva nk'urubyiruko 
nkuko uh, nyakubaho his excellence akomeza tubwira ntango wagira focus wanwe wase <laughs> reka mvuge gutyo kandi ministre nanone w'ubuzima yaravuze ngo kugira ngo byibuze uh, icupa rimwe umweye rizaje gushira mu mubiri ubwo burozi bigufata byibuze amasaha nkangahe hafi umunsi ngira ngo urenga 78 iminsi birirenga urumva rero nimba uru rubyiruko ufata ibyo cupa rya buri munsi cyangwa se utari mu rumva neza icyo uri kubwirwa ko mu mubiri wawe harimo burozi that's first icya kabiri nta focus ufite numva nk'urubyiruko yari gahunda twagombye kumva kandi tukumva ko ntango inyungu ari izabanda ahubwo inyungu ni kuri twebwe nimba dushaka kuba abayobozi bari responsible uyu munsi nejo ate nubwo ngo nabayobozi mu nzego za leta n'umuyobozi kugiti cy'umuntu ntango wakiyobora na uga utari focused navuga rero nk'urubyiruko ni gahunda urubyiruko rwatangiye kumva nabo navuga ko ari ijana ku ijana ariko kubona ko uko biri kose hari kiri kugabanyuka kandi kigaragara kinini aho ubona urubyiruko rwinshi ruri kuvuga ruti ibyo bya bwenge cyangwa se inzoga nibindi igihe nabinkwere nta kintu bimariye hari urubyiruko rutandukanye rugenda rutanga ayo ma testimonies kavuga igihe nabirekeye nabashije kwicara na bagenzi banje tubasha gukora ikintu runaka rero numva ni gahunda urubyiruko ruri kumva cyane mo nizindi mbaraga ariko ni ni gahunda urubyiruko twumva ko dufitiye no mumaro murakoze yego reka twongere nanone tubibutse yuko usibye kuba Rwanda de ari umwanya wo kuganira ni numwanya nanone wo guhana ubuhamya kumva navuga ngo ibyo mugenzi wawe yagezeho uburyo yakoze aho ageze kugira ngo byigishe nabandi kugira ngo naho bwawe ugire icyo bigusigira cyangwa se nawe ugire uruhare rwe wumva ko watanga rika twumve ubuhamya bwa Maurice bagaragaza nawe ufite byinshi afite urugendo agiye kudusangiza bagaragaza mba hano ikigali ndi rwiyemeza mirimo nkora imirimo y'ubucuruzi butandukanye hari imirimo yo hoteli hano mubona inside africa ndi mu bucuruzi bw'ibinyobwa bw'inzoga manama divayi na marikeri hanyuma nkaba ndi mu byerekeye amazu amaza kodeshwa estate ariko ubu ndi cyane mu bintu byikora na buhanga aho dufite application ya IBM ikora nyemeza buguzi za Rwanda Revenue icyo Rwanda Day ya Marie navuga ko hari byinshi maze kujya muri Rwanda de geze kuri eshanu niba ntibeshye cyangwa zirarenga nk'umuntu nyarwanda wo muri diaspora wabaye imyaka myinshi hanze mu burayi mu bibiri kuva nataha kuva mu bibiri na 10 navuga ko hari ibintu byinshi nagikomeje kugenda niyongeraho uko navaga muri Rwanda de Uh, muri Rwanda Day ikintu cya mbere na hantu duhurira twese abanyarwanda b'ingeri zose abayobozi abacuruzi tukagirana ama contact ngira ngo murabizi muri business contact nicyo kintu cya mbere ah uh, rwose buri gihe njya muri Rwanda Day insistigajwe eh, no kujyana kugira ama contact muri zo business bankora Uh, muri Rwanda de ariko tuhumvira n'izindi tuhabaho ama discours havugirwa kumbwirwa ruha meze havugirwa tukamenya byinshi ku gihugu cyacu uh, mu kuri igihugu akatuganiriza nabandi bayobozi batandukanye uh, bigenda bidufasha tugenda tumenya n'ikerekezo igihugu cyacu kiganamo ugasanga uh, nyine bira 
kongerera ubumenyi kuri iyo ngingo muri Rwanda day tuhahurira nabandi banyamahanga ni muri ibyo rwego nayo ma contact abandi banyamahanga nabo baje bashaka kumenya urwanda bashaka bumvisha urwanda ariko batarasobanukirwa nabo tukahahurira ugasanga nabo tubyizanya ma contact bamwe ugasanga muri izo kuza gukorera mu Rwanda ugasanga nawe mugize contact imwe na rimwe hakaba hagira ikintu kivamo uh, nabaha nk'urugero hari proje y'ubwubatsi uh, nje nawe dufatanije mu ryango twari dufite ari muri Rwanda day naje kwahurira n'abanyamerika bifuzaga gukora investment bakuba kamazu bari bakeneye tera abo rero twarahuye turaganira turanegosya turamenyana biza no kugeraho rwose tugira icyo duhuzaho twagiranya amasezerano ikibanza bifuzaga gukora kubona barakibona natwe mushinga w'ubwubatsi twifuzaga ubu turimo kutangira ariko biri mu nzira nziza bivuga ngo iyo ni rencontre ingira kamaro nagize ubwo najyaga muri Rwanda day uh, hari ubundi bucuruzi hari abantu be importa inzoga madivayi ama sparkling wine ama champagne twahuye nubwo bo babaga mu Rwanda ariko muri Rwanda day byabayeho nko kubonana tukisanzura tukaganira business uh, nabo biza kurangira bivuyemo imikoranire na nubu igihari kandi urebye twarabashije kubonana neza muri muri Rwanda day ah uh, harabaye ubozi batandukanye na narananiwe kubona na bavuga bo ni kibenshi umuntu abayifuza kubona ariko iyo tugeze muri Rwanda day ukamwegera ubasha kumwegera ukamubona ntago abahuze cyane uh, harabo rero twagiye tubonana nk'ibibazo umuntu abaragiye ahura nabyo ukabimubwira umuyobozi ukabimubwira akagoha mukamenyana akagoha audience akagoha rendezvous byagiye bimbaho kenshi kandi kenshi biturutse muri muri uko kubona na muri Rwanda day ha ubu nubuhanya bwa Maurice ni umucuruzi nirwemeza mirimo afite ibikorwa bitandukanye akora hano ari kurumva ko yagize amahirwe menshi yakuye amuko yaragiye yitabira Rwanda Days itandukanye birabyivugiye yagiye ahura n'abayobozi yagiye ahura n'abandi bashora mari bageraje ibiganiro nabyo byagiye bivamo inyungu ubu nubuhamya bwiza bwerekana ko hari umusaruro navuga ngo garagara e bagaragaza nko ko agenda garagaza icyo byamumariye kujya muri Rwanda de ko yahuraga nabandi bashora mari bandi barwiyemeza mirimo ibyo yabigiyeho ibyo akamaro byamugiriye uko byazamuye business ye mu buryo butandukanye agenda garagaza impact nziza kubitabira Rwanda de agenda garagaza icyo Rwanda de igenda imarira ababasha kuyitabira muri iki kiganiro aho turimo kuganira kuri Rwanda de ku nshuro o ya 12 ibera Washington District of Columbia abanyarwanda bariyo bagiye kwihura no mukuru w'igihugu bagiye guhura n'abaturutse imihanda yose kugira ngo baganire bungurane bitekerezo turi kumwe na mugenzi wacu Edi Sabiti no musesenguze kandi izi Rwanda de zagiye ziba nyinshi yarazikurikiye nyinshi ya yazikozeho commentaires zitandukanye uh, Edi Sabiti turakwakiriye akoze cyane Marcel uh, ndetse na Nadia na mushiki wacu hano mm, mutesi Serine mm. uh, Rwanda de nk'igikorwa abanyarwanda bahuriramo bakaganira ni nchuru ya chumina kwenye kuna vivugaga na jirangu uduye impacte yayo reka reka Marcel wenda alaza kutraza kukomeza reka akakanya tubanze dukurikire muhango nyiri zina uri kubera Washington wa Rwanda Day tukurikire muri kano kanya uyu munsi kandi turaza kunezezwa nuko tuza kugira ibiganiro byiza bitandukanye nagira ngo mugenzi wanje nababibwire And my name is Francoise Nijena and it is truly an honor to be your other MC today. Now, 
I don't know about you all, but I need a moment to take all this in. I have never seen so many Rwandans gathered in one place outside Rwanda. I feel so emotional right now. I have to say, this is incredible. So let's start by seeing Thank you. And let's see my Rwandans who've traveled all the way from across Europe. I know some of you are still jet lagged, but I need to hear you and I need to see you. Where are you? All right, let's see my Rwandans who've traveled all across from Canada, the United States. Let's see you. Yeah, representing, representing. And now let's see our dear friends of Rwanda who've traveled from all across the world. Let's see you and let's hear you. Thank you all so much. Welcome to Rwanda Day 2024. This is the 11th Rwanda Day and the first since 2019. So I know I speak for many of you when I say that this has indeed been a long time coming. As you have seen for yourselves, today we have over 6,000 people gathered here in Washington, D.C., some are in this room and some in another room. And you all have traveled far and wide. This includes Rwandans and friends of Rwanda, we're also joined by millions on TV and the radio. All this is a testament and goes without saying that we're very proud of Rwanda. We're proud to be Rwandans and we're proud of how far our country has come. As I look around, thank you. As I look around, I see so many familiar faces. I've run into people I haven't seen since high school and it truly is so exciting to see you all. You all have indeed come from far and wide. You've shown up and out for Rwanda Day 2024, and it is truly an honor to have you here. We have so much in store for you. Sit back and relax and enjoy. Before we start, I know you all are excited. Let's first get into some housekeeping items. Remember to keep your phone silent. Be mindful while taking pictures or videos. Keep flashes off. We do have translation channels. Channel one will be in English, channel two in French, channel three in Kinyaranda. We also have some family rooms, so if you need to nurse or take a break with your kids, that will be in the Chesapeake room. And in case of medical emergencies, we also have medical professional available on ground. If you need to use the bathroom, there's some right outside this way. And with that, we'll dive right into our sessions. Mbere yuko uh, tujya mu biganiro nagira ngo nze kubabwira ko tuza kuganira ku tsanganya amatsiko nziza cyane tuze gukurikira uh, ariko mbere yaho uh, turaza kwakira umuyobozi w'intara ya gatandatu uhagarariye abandi nyakubaho yeho ya dambangukira ku ijambo ry'ikaze kubashitsi bose baturutse imihanda yose Braho. Braho. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that means, I think by now you'd have heard that Muraho means how are you in our mother tongue. So let's try that again. Muraho. Oh, it's kind of, uh, I think people are, are kind of need uh, a little awakening. It is a pleasure to see as many of you here today. It's a day we've been all waiting for for quite a while. I am Yehoya Dambangutira, as said, and I have the honor and the privilege of being the leader of the 29 local communities in the U.S., meaning I'm the president of the Rwandans in this mighty in Haragatandatu in the United States. 
We want to welcome each and every one of you that has chosen to be here today. I know you've traveled many miles to be here, but the good thing is you have come home to the Rwanda we've chosen here in the United States. And uh, we have, as I said, 29 independent uh, associations here in the United States, and we comprise over 10,000 of us. And what I want to let you know is you being here, having chosen to be here, is indeed an honor to each and every Rwandan in this place. Those who came from afar, we welcome you. Avia Murgwanda, Nomunhara Zindi, Zigihugu, Australia, Asia, Europe, all over. We love the fact that you chose to be here today. If you stood where I'm standing here, you'd see a happy throng of Rwandans and friends of Rwanda. So the 29 leaders of this community came together and mobilized. And to that, they mobilized over 10,000 people who registered to be here today. However, some of them may not be here, but they are watching online and we welcome you and we thank you, the leaders of the 29 communities, wherever you are in the audience, I want you to know that we appreciate everything you do because, yes, they deserve a round of applause. As you know, this country has 50 states, so we do the best we can to make sure every Rwandan and a friend of Rwanda knows exactly what Rwanda is all about and you'll learn more about that. And so this 2024 is a remarkable and significant year for our country. We celebrate 30 years of the birth of a nation, and we celebrate the gains achieved, and most importantly, the choices we collectively make and made and continue to make each day. We need you to continue to sound the clarion call because we want to make sure that the future of Rwandans, the young Rwandans that are here today, they can carry on the legacy and the lessons of today and the most recent lessons that we have, they can continue to build the Rwanda they want, the Rwanda they choose, and the Rwanda they deserve. So the choices we have made are choices that are lasting and homegrown solutions will continue to be grown and one day the future generation will stand here, sit where you are and say, this is the Rwanda we chose, this is the Rwanda we all gain from and this is the Rwanda whose gains we shall preserve. And may God bless you today as you have a wonderful time and I'll have to come back here later and get a gauge how you are doing and how you have learned. So I'll see you later. Welcome, welcome to a high kazem yese kandi tuabishimiye kwa mngaje mngafatu yi mnganya kubana natu. Imanu wa humjisha. Thank you so much to the president of Rwanda Community Abroad. It really is amazing to see that Rwandans are not only building the country from within Rwanda, but even as we're outside the country, we're thinking all about our country and we're continuing to contribute to the development of Rwanda. Thank you so much. I will now lead us into our next session, and this session is going to be on the theme, Rwanda at 30, Rwanda in the world. So I am honored to welcome on stage our distinguished panelists, Honorable Vicent Viruta, the, foreign, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Honorable Abdallah Utumatkui Shima, the Minister of Youth and Arts, and finally, Ambassador Jendai Fraser from the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. Welcome, the floor is yours.
banya kuba twabaha ijambo reka mbabwire ko baza kuvuga ikiganiro cyabo ni bamara kutukitugezaho turaza kwakira ibitekerezo uh, ibibazo se uh, hano muri iki cyumba no hanze y'icyumba nagira ngo mbahe ijambo banya kuba fellow rwandans friends of rwanda muraho mwese i am happy to be with you today for this edition of rwanda day and to share with you a few highlights on rwanda's foreign policy and uh, recent developments in our region on the continent and beyond. It has been almost 30 years since the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, and during the last 30 years, Rwanda has strategically positioned itself in the world to foster peace, its economic development, and security. In recent years, Rwanda has increased its diplomatic reach and broadened its foreign policy areas. And since the last Rwanda Day in October 2019, we have opened eight new diplomatic missions in, the four, in four different continents, bringing the total number of our diplomatic missions abroad to 47. And for the first time in the history of our country, we will have a presence in Latin America because we are opening an embassy of Rwanda in Brasil. And by the way, the ambassador designate to Brasilia might be somewhere in the room. So he is part of this gathering. During the, during the same period, the diplomatic community in Chigari has also been growing, and Chigari is hosting more and more foreign missions. Today, we have 45 foreign diplomatic missions in, the, in Rwanda, and we have uh, received diplomats from representing Mozambique, Pakistan, Denmark, Poland, Hungary, Guinea Conakry, Ukraine, and uh, Canada has also upgraded its diplomatic mission to a high commission. <laughs> and new embassies Rwanda opened uh, abroad, uh, apart from the one in Brazil I already mentioned. We have, we have an embassy in Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Guinea Conakry, Hungary. We have a diplomatic mission in the Central African Republic, and we have also an embassy in the Czech Republic. Rwanda is also increasingly becoming the home of various international organizations, such as the African Medicine Agency, the Fund for Export Development in Africa, the FIFA Regional Development Office, and the Susan Thompson Buffett Foundation headquarters for the Africa region, just to name a few. To attain our objectives for transformation, Rwanda fosters strategic partnerships in various sectors. That is how, in the health sector, we have entered in an innovative partnership with the German technology firm BioNTech to start manufacturing mRNA-based products and vaccines in Rwanda. Our ambition is to address the gap in the production of life-saving vaccines in Africa by locally producing them to serve both our needs and regional markets. Another partnership which, which has been in the media in the last few months is the migration and economic development partnership Rwanda entered into with the UK. Rwanda has entered that broad economic development and migration partnership to address the root causes of the migration crisis by tackling the global inequalities in opportunities that drive economic migrants from their homes. So Rwanda by entering in this partnership is playing a role in addressing global issues such as the migration 
crisis. The Migration and Economic Development Partnership will invest in Rwanda's economic development, providing opportunities for migrants and Rwandans alike. And this initiative will play a crucial role in combating human trafficking networks associated with illegal migration. And beyond this partnership, Rwanda continues to work with the African Union and the UNHCR to welcome refugees, notably through the emergency transit mechanism, which provides temporary refuge for migrants coming from Libya before their relocation. And between September 2019 and December 2023, we have received over 2,000 refugees and asylum seekers who were evacuated from Libya, and over 1,200 refugees among these have subsequently been resettled to third countries. At the continental level, Rwanda has worked with other nations to launch the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which was signed in Chigari in 2018, and it is the largest continental free trade area in the world and has the potential to create wealth for all Africans. But, as you know, prosperity cannot exist without peace. And this is why Rwanda has remained engaged in military peacekeeping missions throughout Africa under the United Nations banner. With almost 6,000 peacekeepers, Rwanda is the fourth largest contributor of peacekeepers in the world. And beyond peacekeeping, Rwanda provides support under bilateral arrangement to countries such as Central African Republic, and we also support the government of Mozambique to fight terrorism. Since our first deployments in those countries, the situation has greatly improved, contributing to the larger stability of our continent. Rwanda is also an active member of the East African community and of the economic community of Central African states, which count 11 member states, while the East African community today is comprised of eight countries and home to 283 million citizens. Coming to the situation in our own region, the Great Lakes region. You are aware that the security situation has remained volatile in the last couple of years, particularly since the resurgence of M23 towards the end of 2021. This resurgence was a consequence of the non-implementation of previously signed political agreements and the persistence of armed groups in Eastern DRC, including the genocidal FDLR, which constitutes a security threat to Rwanda. And recently, this conflict has attracted new regional actors, small and big, complicating further this crisis. Increasing hate speech and targeted killings against the Rwanda-speaking Congolese mainly Tutsis, are of great concern. And this has led to Rwanda receiving more than 100,000 Congolese refugees. Some of them have been in Rwanda for more than two, 22 years now. And there are even more in uh, neighboring countries, such as Uganda and Kenya. Why regional mechanisms such as the Nairobi and the Rwanda processes have been established to resolve this conflict, the lack of political will has frustrated their implementation and the achievement of peace. International partners, including the U.S., have also been active, actively involved in efforts to de-escalate tensions between Rwanda and DRC and find solutions to the conflict. 
While Rwanda is committed to peace and believes that a political solution is better indicated to solve the political problems in our region, appropriate defense, defensive measures are in place to protect our territory and no one should be worried about the security of Rwanda. Coming to this part of the world to conclude, Rwanda and the United States enjoy good relations. The U.S. is a valued partner in our development and is active in many sectors including health, space, trade and investment, and we hope to increase our economic ties in the future. Rwanda is a land of opportunities, open for business and ready for American investments. Let me stop here my introduction and I look forward to exchanging with you and eventually providing more details on elements I shared in these introductory remarks. I thank you for your kind attention. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jendai Fraser. I am the former U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs during the Bush administration and U.S. Ambassador to South Africa. And I'm currently a Distinguished Visiting Fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Muraho. <laughs> My name is uh, Abdallah Utmatkwishima. I'm the Minister of Youth and Arts in Rwanda. Well, I guess I'll start off. <laughs> um, I uh, very much appreciated uh, the Honorable Minister's remarks about Rwanda at 30, Rwanda in the world. Um, when I think about Rwanda at 30, what I think about, which is so remarkable, is that since the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994, Rwanda has done more than most African countries um, to rebuild its society for reconciliation, to create an environment of prosperity, uh, and really to um, take charge of its own destiny. And when I think about this, um, many other countries in Africa since 1960, it's been 60 years for them or more. When I think about what's been done in this 30 years, I ask myself, what is that unique factor um, that is responsible for this success? And I'm sure that there are many, many factors, but one that I think um, beyond sort of the leadership of the country and the hard work of the citizens uh, is there's this, Rwandans have been self-determining uh, in the sense that they've built their institutions around their own culture and their own traditions. Uh, and I think this, this is absolutely critical. Um, when I think about it, in 2001 or so, I was in the, in the administration and the Gachacha courts were coming up to deal with the perpetrators of genocide. And the international community was very much set against the Gachacha courts as a uh, traditional justice-based uh, system in the hands of the Rwandan communities. Uh, they thought this is not going to work. You know, there was a UN International, uh, a UN ICTR, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Uh, and they were saying that's the way to go. But the Rwandan people and the Rwandan leadership stuck to its gun, looked to its tradition and its history, and w made a remarkable move towards actually dealing with thousands and thousands of cases of uh, the perpetrators in hundreds of uh, communities around the country, throughout the country. And so this was a tremendous success. 
And again, it was built on Rwanda's history, Rwanda's culture, Rwanda's traditions. Um, I think about Rwanda Day itself, um, the fact that, you know, there's this new tradition of going outside of the borders, bringing the community together, um, talking about and bringing the friends of Rwanda together, as the minister was talking about the, uh, the um, ability to showcase uh, what's happening in Rwanda so that more visitors will come, so that more um, investors will come to the country as well, and also to reconnect with those Rwandans who are living abroad. And so I think that this intentionality, um, this, this vision, this leadership, and this fidelity to self and self-determination is a key to why in 30 years, in, in, in Rwanda at 30, uh, there's been such remarkable achievement. Um, so with that, uh, Minister and Minister, um, I will turn it over to you and I'm sure we'll have more to discuss. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm very happy to be on this stage today. It's my first time at Rwanda Day. And it's not, and it's always great to be at the first time and you are at the panel at the first time. And you, and, and you are at the panel as a minister. It's not, it's not that. It's really, it's really something uh, not to take for granted. It's, it's big, it's historical, it's Rwanda at 30. You, you can get it. Another thing that is a little bit complicated with me is I've been speaking Kenya Rwanda the entire life, and now I'm supposed to speak after gender in English. And so I'm going to represent all the people who speak this Kenya English, so you, you're going to excuse me. <laughs> As we are in America, I'm going to share with you a, a, a short story when I came to America for the first time. It was in 2016. It was my first time to come to the US. I was coming for my pre-doc fellowship in the NIH, the National Institutes of Health. It's actually near here, it's in Bethesda. I was going to do diabetes epidemiology. But before I came, I went to see one of the leaders in Rwanda because I wanted some you know, words of wisdom before I could fly for the first time. And that leader told me, you are going to America, a strong nation, well developed, with economic power. When you go there to study your medical things, please study other things too. He actually told me when you get out of the airport, start learning. And I told him what, what to learn because I don't know the country. It's, it's, it's. He, he told me, as a Rwandan, when you travel in a country like America, you have to learn everything they are doing. He even told me when you go to the campus, in my case, when you go to the NIH campus, see how the NIH is built, examine the labs, the standards, the protocols, so when you come back home, you can apply both your medical skills, but also the entire ecosystem, the organization's culture, and other things. But when I arrived in America uh, as a young man, as a young doctor, as a young professional, I was really excited to see to this, this country. To tell you the truth, I saw it very developed, as they told me, trains, buses, good cities, I was really amazed. And I asked a critical question to my supervisor. How does a country develop this much? Like, how do they do it? When I came, it was on the 4th of July. So it was the celebration of independence of America. It was the 4th of July in 2016. America was celebrating 240 years of independence. 200, 240 years of stability. 240 years of peace. 
And when you see all these things, they have been built in the last 246 years. And we have just 30, 30 years. You can see the difference. I think when we, when we become 240 from the 30 we are today, it's going to be huge. <laughs> then, then I asked my supervisor, how does a country do this? How did America do this? She told me, you are not supposed to discuss history in, in a medical lab. Again, we have a disclaimer, we don't discuss politics in NIH. So, but I'm, I'm gonna give you good advice. In all your weekends, go to Washington DC and visit all these 15 museums, the Smithsonian's museums that are here. For those who, are still, who, who still have time, they have to visit the, the museums here in the, in the DC. And then visit Lincoln Memorial Thomas Jefferson Memorial, uh, Washington Monument, Martin Luther King Memorial, and if you have time, go to Maryland and even visit the Harriet Tubman. So I went to all of those places. And she told me, my supervisor, what did you get as a scientist? What do you get in those names I gave you? So Lincoln Memorial, Thomas Jefferson Memorial, Washington Monument. She told me, to do this, America had names, big names. Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman. And she told me, in order to do it in Rwanda, you need a name. And she told me, you have a name, actually, Paul Kagame. She told me in Rwanda, in the last, of course today, in the last 30 years, you have a name. And that name will help you, it has helped you to build what you have already built, but that name will continue to help you to build even the generations to come. So there is always a name in a developed country. My supervisor even told me, if you go in other countries, go to Singapore, there is a name. Lee Kuan Yew. In any country you go, and she asked me, did you pass by Paris? I said, no. But there is also an airport called the CDG. There is, CDG is what? Is Charles de Gaulle. There is always a name behind a very developed country. And Rwanda, we have a name, guys. <laughs> and that was number one. And then I asked her, but how how do they build these big buildings, these convention centers, the universities, and these NIH? And she told me, here in America, there's a strong private sector, strong people doing business, and that kind of model, different models of wealth creation. We have the Wall Street, the stock markets. She told me we even have the Silicon Valley for innovations. And she told me, if you want a, your country to be developed, Learn some of the models we have here. Try to find an innovation hub in your country. Try to work harder with the wealth creation models and develop your private sector. That, that's one of the other things she told me. But then I asked her, it seems you have been very peaceful, no wars, no nothing. She told me, visit the Arlington <laughs> National Cemetery. So, she sent me to Arlington National Cemetery, and then I asked her, there are a big cemetery with the military uh, graves. And I asked her, why do you want me to go there? And she, tell, she told me, for a nation to be like this, to be peaceful for this long, 240 years, you need a strong military. You need a strong army. That will protect your country inside and outside. And uh, I, I told her that as far as I know in Rwanda, we, when you ask the population of Rwanda, who, do you, who are you satisfied with? They will tell you 99.9% we are satisfied with the president. Next, we are satisfied with our military. And I think we are there. So to tell you what I learned in America, 
The only thing, the only thing I kept asking, Ambassador, it's, it's the wall in the board on the neighboring countries, the wall. Like, you always have issues with the neighbors. So then I, I always ask, why if you are developed, peaceful, strong, you want to build the wall? And, and, and the easy answer is, neighbors are always like that. So you, you need to... <laughs> you need to always deal with the neighbors. When they are hungry, they can, they, you know, they will think you have taken their food when they... So, even if you are developed as America, you need to deal with your neighbors. So back home also, we have some issues of the neighbors and... I don't know. I, I, I don't know if, maybe the ambassador with her diplomacy will try to correct this statement. <laughs> but, but I want to tell you that for the young people, Rwanda at 30, Rwanda at 30 means the name. I think you've got the name, right? We have to love our name, protect our name, cherish our name. And when we are in 2024, we have to remember our what? Our name. <laughs> and then young people keep asking, what kind of skills do we need? What kind of commitments do we need after 30 years of, of Rwanda? The future is unpredictable. And the world is going to keep changing. Our friends, we are not sure if they are going to continue to be our friends, but the American friends will continue to be our friends, right? <laughs> so, at least that we can, that we can understand, uh, we can put that in our bank. But the world is changing, so we'll need new uh, models of diplomacy. So if we have young people in, in America, studying international relations and diplomacy, we will need new skills in that domain. With the artificial intelligence and the new skills and the robotics, and the, we need new skills also to bring back home. But if you are successful here in America, we encourage you to continue to be excellent where you are. And when you are excellent, doing great, getting some money, send us some money back home. Yes. We don't want you to rush and come home quickly. No, get first those money and send us some. And I think this is also one way we can do it. So having said this, Rwanda at 30, we need to continue liberating our mindsets. The journey of developing Rwanda is today, tomorrow, and in the future. America is 247 years old. I mean, 247 independent, peaceful, democratic. We are just a 30. We are just one eighth of what they have achieved. But seeing what we have achieved, where we came from as a nation, there is really a hope in the horizon. We can do it. And, and, and to tell you the truth, we have young people committed. In the room, we have young people who came from Rwanda on their own ticket, who came to show you what they are doing. Please see what they are doing. They are amazing. The future in the, is in the, hand, in, in the hands of the young people, and they are very ready and committed. So I, I want to assure you that Rwanda at 30 give us a lot of work, a lot of commitment, but as far as we have these energetic young people, we can do it. But will you stay our friend in the next 240 years? <laughs> you can count on it. <laughs> yes, you can, you can absolutely count on it, Minister. I think you can see why Rwanda is so successful in Minister Abdallah here. Please. <laughs> yes. Yes. Marcos there? 
Barakoze abayobozi bacu banya kwa ministers ndetse n'umuyobozi waje kwifatanya nabo inshuti y'u Rwanda ku kiganiro kiza badukoreye kigaruka ku myaka 33 u Rwanda ku isi. Braryoshe cyane. Nagera rero ngo mu mwanya dusangira ibitekerezo abafite ibitekerezo ntashobora no kuboneka bifuza kugira icyo babaza bakiri mu myanya yabo nagira ngo kwakire ibitekerezo bibiri bituruka muri ruri ya ruhande babisubize bakiri mu byicaro mwanya no wanyu kugira ngo abafite microphone baradufasha kugira ngo ibitekerezo ibibazo bibagereho nabo bakoresha umwanya neza basubize nabo no bazamuye kuboko abafite microphone bamwegereza muri ruri ya ruhande ndabona umuntu oh thank you very much um, i've been asked to make a few comments about the progress for the last 30 years i've had the privilege of evaluating and watching rwanda at 30 and as the minister of youth said that i think the question is not how did america do to, to do it but how did rwanda do it and in, in 30 years, Rwanda is now the country with more women in parliament than any country in the world. That's a big part of the progress. Rwanda has made tremendous progress in increasing life expectancy and, and lowering poverty. In education, the innovative use of technology. In healthcare, using drones to deliver medicine to rural areas. So I honor today 30 years of what I call people-centered development. And after 30 years, I hope the world realizes this is the story of hope in the world. Thank you. Yego twa kwakira ikindi gitekerezo arakoze cyane. Predecessor. I'm Colonel Retired Rick Worth, longtime friend. Can you hear me now? Okay, there we go. I've been asked to make some remarks. I'm uh, Colonel Retired Rick Worth, a longtime friend of Rwanda. Uh, first and foremost, what I want to say Rwanda's success is attributed to the vision of the Rwandan Patriotic Front. Prior to me going to uh, Rwanda in October 1994 in support to Attaché to reestablish U.S. Embassy, my good friend Charles Moragandi had given me the RPF program. Unlike many liberation organizations glo globally, Rwanda actually accomplished the Rwandan Patriotic Front vision. It's about a 40-page document. That's the testament. There was a blueprint. And then coupled with that was leadership. What I'm going to talk about is the greatness of the Rwandan military. Because first and foremost, it was the Rwandan Patriotic Army that stopped the genocide in 1994. <laughs> Secondly, almost immediately, they integrated. I went to Gako in 1994 and I met uh, former uh, Force Army Rwandais uh, that were integrated. But more importantly, during the Second Congo War, the Rwandans needed fighters. And so what, what happened is the majority of the people would come out of the refugee camps. There was a registry, and they integrated Force Army Rwandais. Let me just share an anecdote. There was an officer who was wounded outside of Kaleme, and in his army, the FAR, if you were from Bayumbo or you from Gassini or Ruangari, there was a hierarchy. He thought, okay, I'm a Hutu. The Tutsi soldier's not going to rescue me. Well, guess what? They were all RPA, and he wound up going back to the hospital in Rwanda. That's the testament to the greatness of Rwanda. As a military professional, I would rate the Rwandan Democrat, our Patriot, our De uh, Defense Force, RDF, as the greatest military in Sub-Saharan Africa. Why do I say this? Previously, I would have rated the Ethiopian National Defense Force. But because of the civil war in Ethiopia, they no longer hold that status. But if you look at the accomplishments of the RDF, first and foremost in peacekeeping, fourth in the world, 
President Kagame told all his troops going to Darfur, we are not going to allow human rights abuses. We're going there to enforce the peace because we are the victims of a failed UN mission, UNAMIR. And it was not the Lair's fault. It came out of New York. And I know that for a fact because I was a major at the Pentagon working this. The Lair asked for intervention. He was denied time and time again. Just read his book. Lastly, as uh, the minister indicated, Rwanda has bilateral relations. They instilled peace in Mozambique. Sadek is leaving, and it looks like Rwanda is probably going to have to send another 2,000 troops. The people in northern Mozambique rever the Rwandan police and the Rwandan military over their own security forces. That's a testament. And lastly, in the Central African Republic, they serve as a counterweight. Everybody has heard of Wagner, which are predatory. The solution to the CAR, and this is coming from a good Rwandan brother of mine, and I will, who remains unnamed, but the United States government needs to get behind the Rwandans to train the security force of CAR, and then we make Wagner irrelevant. And I'll leave it at that. Mu byukuri ntibabajije ibibazo birasa nkaho bashimaga twabasubiza umwanya baka bakagira icyo babivugaho noneho tugasoza icyiciro cya mbere cy'ibitekerezo byatanzwe So uh, I think there is no much to say uh, on uh, the interventions we just had from the, the floor it's uh, about the testimonies about the achievement of one in the last 30 years. And those achievements were possible because of the leadership, the vision, the determination of uh, the leadership and the citizens of Rwanda. But most importantly, the ownership of our development. Uh, Ambassador Jinda uh, referred to homegrown solutions. That means that we can borrow good practices from here and there, but we need to own them and to adapt them to our own culture, to, the, to our own society, and that is what we did. And uh, that is how we could achieve uh, uh, some, some results like uh, uh, the life expectancy referred to by Professor Maggi and many other achievements. So it is just about uh, leadership. It is very important. It is about the vision, but it is also about the leadership being able to share that vision with the population for the ownership and being able to, to implement and uh, achieve the result we are celebrating today. So that's uh, what I got from these interventions, and uh, uh, I don't know if you have to comment uh, further. Yes, I'd like to just um, conclude by saying that we talked about Rwanda at 30, but also Rwanda in the world. I think it's extremely important to uh, uh, emphasize some of the points that the minister and even Rick made about the role that Rwanda is playing in terms of the elevation of Africa as a whole. Um, it's sort of pan-African push. Uh, and specifically, when I think about it, the minister talked about the Rwanda's role in the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement to actually bring prosperity to the continent by creating one large market. It's absolutely critical. And it took the leadership of President Kagame as the chair of the African Union to really push that forward and get all of the countries on the continent to agree and ratify that treaty. 
Um, secondly, the move towards the free movement of African people across the continent has been led and spearheaded by Rwanda and President Kagame as well. I think that's extremely important, and we, we need to acknowledge that. Um, as Rick said and others, uh, the Rwandan uh, military is playing a peacekeeping and stability role across the continent. I, I recall in South Sudan when um, uh, there was some fighting going on and President Kagame had to warn the South Sudanese that the RPA was going to, the Rwanda uh, Patriotic Army was going to protect civilians. So do not attack civilians because it's on at that point. You know, and I think that that type of clarity of the need to protect civilian populations um, in these conflict areas and to play a role as a stabilizer that goes beyond, yes, Rwanda is part of UN missions, but it is also doing relationships or bilateral uh, agreements with countries that are in crisis, like Mozambique with the terror threat there in the north. Um, and Rwanda is playing that stability role. And so I think that whether it's prosperity, it's, it's economics, it's a vision for the continent to play a role in terms of the transformation of this globe. We're at an inflection point where the international system is completely in flux. Uh, the rules of the game are changing and it's gonna take a united Africa and leadership of a country like Rwanda to get that collective voice to be able this time Right, this time when the rules are set, just like after World War II, the rules were set, most African countries were colonized. This time they're free. Um, and let's support Rwanda in being a major continued catalyst for Africa's role globally. Uh, th thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I really captured good points from the the uh, discussions. We are going into Kwibuka 30, we are going into Kwibohora 30, and after Kwibohora we are going into elections. I, I want to request uh, the people in, in, who are in attendance here, even those online, that this year has a special meaning to Rwandans. Because Rwanda at 30, it means, uh, even, even in my portfolio as the Minister of Youth, young people are between 16 and 30. So if you become 31, you are no longer young. <laughs> so this year, you gotta decide because Rwanda is out of 16 to 30 bracket. So there will be a lot of decisions to take, but we need to, to, when we are doing Kivuka 30, we have to remember. We have to remember where we came from, different choices our country has taken. We have to preserve uh, what we have achieved. We have to build even more, but also we have to improve. I, I think my call to the young people is that we need ideological clarity always to understand the choices we have taken, to, to master our history, and to say yes to all good policies our leaders are giving us, and of course, to do our best in 2024. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to our distinguished panelists. Thank you for your wisdom. I will actually give an opportunity to one more person to ask a question. If you have a burning question that you really want to ask, we want to make sure you have the opportunity. And we can, we can take a question from this side. I see a hand back there. Let's get the mic to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Prof. Yohani Kainamura, and I am an educator uh, for um, trade. So mine is more like uh, um, an appreciation to what the leadership of Rwanda has been doing in terms of 
all aspects of the Rwandan development. But uh, more importantly, as an educator, I wanted to appreciate what they have done in terms of education, because I believe that education is, uh, uh, is the basic right and one of the most powerful drivers of economic development. And um, I believe that education is uh, one of the most important tools that uh, can improve health, uh, economic development can improve um, uh, equality, gender, and it is no surprise that Rwanda has made strides in all those areas because they have invested so much in education. Um, I have been watching education in Rwanda, and there is a strong indication that Rwanda is on the rise. My friends, Rwanda is on the rise. When you look at the young people, what they are achieving, it's on the rise. But I also believe that education is not a destination. It is a journey, and that journey we have to all take all together. Friends, I know that we, many of us do not live in Rwanda, but we can still participate. We can still um, contribute to that endeavor because I believe that with education, with a strong education, we can make our country shine. It's already shining, but it can, I mean, there is no limits. The limits, the, the sky is the limit. So um, I want to encourage my fellow men, my countrymen, uh, the diaspora members, do all you can. The education has become global. You can participate, you can educate, you can teach, you can start schools, you can um, do so much to really empower young people in our country because in the last 30 years, with what has been done, education is clearly one of the indicators that the progress has been made and it needs to be sustained, and that's where you and I come in. So I really encourage you to come in and join in and help, and help build our country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, I did see one person there who had asked before. If you want to quickly ask your question, please make it quick. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to speak in English, guys. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, ministry we will be you call at to be you call no haraba Geneva we are going to be today because I'm going to be going today NASA we're going to be you call Chang was a about number two yeah hands a do go Janet and I'm around America query to have gay to tell Manuka to cut you watch you I'm not to cut the good story do go to a true group you look NASA we're going to be able to watch you Uyobozi kujihugu, mujihugu imbere, ndetse numuyobozi uduwa gariyanu mura Amerika, yuko ba wigani raho, baranji za wakadusha achirijihe. Ya wa ichu mgeru, singomga yuko iba bulimungaka, mshogra kuwa ringe mumyaki wili, changwa se ringe mumyaki tatu, hariko na atu kwe tukajayu. Na yu mafaranga ba adu sabje, tukwa agenda tu ya jani. Kwa koze chani. Thank you so much. You all can respond to these questions briefly, and we'll move on to the next session. So uh, I want to say that uh, while we are celebrating the achievements of our country during the, the last 30 years, we need to keep in mind that development is uh, it is a process. So we have achievements to celebrate today, but we need to keep focused and to be mindful that we need to keep improving in some of specific sectors like education, which was mentioned. And uh, I thank uh, the call for everybody to contribute to that, uh, to that particular sector of education and other sectors. So development is, uh, is a process, there are achievements, but if we just stay there and celebrate and be happy what we have achieved, 
tomorrow we will be lagging behind all other nations. So let's keep focused. Let's keep just looking at way to improve on what we have achieved, to build on those achievements, and go even further. Thank you. Thank you again to our brilliant panelists. Uh, we will move on now to the next session. And I do want to say, you guys have all heard for yourselves the remarkable progress that our country has made in such a short time. It's only the beginning. We still have about a hundred something years to go to catch up. And we've set a record. So I think it's a challenge for you all today to remember that it takes a name and you all can be that name today. And you can commit to being that name today. Thank you. All right. So I now have the honor of introducing our next group of brilliant panelists for our second session on the theme, Taking Care of Our Health. So please help me welcome our panelists. The first one is going to be Dr. Ivan Butera, the Minister of State. We also have Dr. Paulin Basinga from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We have Stella Mucho from the University of Global Health Equity. We also have Dr. Nadej Nziza from the Reagan Institute at MIT and Harvard. And we also have Dr. Sinai Fiseha from Susan T. Buffett Foundation. Thank you all. Please take the stage. All right, thank you again. The floor is yours and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Great, uh, it's, it's, it's great to be in such um, this union with such a large group of uh, good looking, beautiful uh, people. So thank you for all uh, showing up today. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves um, quickly. Um, I'll start, I'm Ivan Butera, I'm a physician by training. I studied in Rwanda, I did my medical school in Rwanda, uh, did part of my grad school as well in, in Rwanda, and then moved to Europe uh, to do the second part of, of my, my, my grad school. Um, but that, in, all that time kept a connection with Rwanda, working on issues that were pertinent and um, of importance to Rwanda at different times. All my research, although um, studying in, in, in Europe um, was tackling issues uh, that were of, uh, of critical importance to Rwanda. And that's how I kept the link with Rwanda forever. And um, uh, about more, like close to a year ago, um, joined into a different position. I became the Minister of State for Health uh, for my country. And of course, many challenges uh, that we found, a long journey that the country has gone through. Um, but one that I'd like to put out here today is an issue of workforce that we have, um, not only in Rwanda, but on the continent in general, uh, where on an average you have one skilled health care worker per 1,000 people, while the standard should be four. So there's this bold initiative in Rwanda to quadruple our health care workers in the next four years. It's a program called 4 by 4 in the next four years. Um, it might sound impossible, but impossible is not random. Um, with all your support here, I think we'll be able to achieve this, and we call for your participation in all the different ways to help us achieve uh, this critical need that we have for the country. Thank you. Over to you, Nadej. Hello everyone, uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. Uh, so yes, my name is Nadej Nziza. I'm a researcher in biology, more precisely immunology. Um, and I work uh, in Boston at Sheridan Institute of MGH, MIT and Harvard, 
where we do work on um, different forms of disease. So we work on infectious diseases, autoimmune disorders, um, cancer, and so uh, more specifically in children, trying to see how we can help kids uh, be better uh, protected against different forms of diseases. So um, I work yeah, in Boston while always collaborating with Randa. Hello everyone, it's such an honor to be here. Uh, my name is Stella Mucho and I'm the head of marketing and communications uh, for the University of Global Health Equity and also Partners in Health. Very long name, but to tell the story short, I'm very glad to sit on a panel with one of our alumni, the Minister of State, Yvonne Witera. And the mission we're working on as a storyteller, what can I say is really reimagining how education could be if it's equity and also service-centered. And it's always a pleasure to be in a panel where there's a lot of people who work in health and are also having equity as a centered approach. So thank you so much. Muraho. Uh, my name is Sanait Fasaha. I was born and raised in Ethiopia. I did my training in the United States. I'm a physician and a lawyer by training, a professor of obstetrics and gynecology, uh, lived in the US for about 35 years, and recently immigrated to Rwanda. Um, <laughs> uh, as I tell uh, people, I say I'm Ethiopian by birth, I happen to be American by chance, and Rwandan by choice. And uh, it's just an incredible honor to be here. I run the Buffett Foundation's global program. Uh, we recently, uh, in the middle of COVID, decided to open an Africa office. Uh, we looked around, and of course, we couldn't find a better place and partner than Rwanda. So that's where we're based. Um, I also serve uh, on the board of University of Global Health Equity. I consider myself part of the Ministry of Health. Um, and uh, truly, truly an honor to work and serve um, in Rwanda, and maybe later on I'll say a little bit more, but for us, um, our foundation is single-handedly focused on the health and well-being of women and girls, um, and when we look at places where we can work, um, at, what, at a given point we were working in 84 countries, and we couldn't find a better partner and role model, not just for Africa, but frankly for the world, than Rwanda, where gender equity, um, equality is practiced. Um, health is not the mere absence of disease, but the realization of uh, well-being, uh, where innovation uh, and risk-taking are part of the everyday. Um, so we feel like we're in this incredible laboratory where we are piloting, testing, measuring, and scaling and taking uh, uh, effective interventions to the rest of the world. So it's an incredible uh, privilege to be part of uh, this journey. To you. Thank you very much tonight. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's uh, Paula Basinga, but back home they call me Louv. So Masamba, if you need someone today, I'm a trained medical doctor, public health expert, but also an artist. I used to be an artist. So I can work with Masamba as well today. I think I'll introduce myself based on the number of WhatsApp group I belong to. The first WhatsApp group I belong to, it's called EDAP, ESP Bunia. So I grew up in DRC, so I did my secondary school uh, back in the DRC, and then came back to Rwanda when I was 18 in 1994, just after the genocide when the first big diaspora guy, or president, you heard, he came back from the US to go back to liberate the country, did something amazing. He actually sent the RPF military to protect the University of Rwanda so that we can go back to school in March 1995. So we actually were the first promotion we opened after the genocide 1995. This is my second WhatsApp group of all medical doctors that went to school in 1995. We're all connected together. Some of them are in this room. Then I did my medical school there, uh, finished and then worked at the University of Rwanda. I'm also part of that WhatsApp group. Uh, Les anciens de l'UNR, are you here? 
I saw some of you here. And then after that, taught at the university, I uh, taught at the School of Public Health. I worked with many here and in the room to really help rebuild the system, working with many from the diaspora who came from the U.S., from Belgium, etc., to be our teachers to rebuild the system. And then 2012, I moved to the U.S. Uh, after completing my, my MPH and PhD at Tulane University to work for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in Seattle, in Washington State. Third WhatsApp group, uh, the diaspora from the U.S., we're all here, so, uh, and our ambassador is here as well, so we're welcoming you all in the U.S., and I've been with the Gates Foundation for the past 12 years. Uh, and uh, I lead the global policy advocacy for the foundation, work very closely with Knight and others. And uh, it's just incredible to be connected to Rwanda. Uh, we've always been connected to Rwanda because the work that we do, we do work on global health, global development, and every time we are challenged by our leaders, both Bill and Melinda, to look at exemplar, to try to really understand which country have done it better and every time we do an analysis, Rwanda comes first. Name it, Rwanda is first in everything that we do. So I'm so pleased to be, to be here with uh, this amazing panel. And probably I'll, uh, I think we need to go back 30 years and try to really understand where Rwanda is today in terms of uh, health, health sector and then have a conversation today. Yes, yes Ivan, where is Rwanda today? Let's do that. Perhaps let me give, uh, snapshot of where Rwanda is today. And one important thing that we can remember is that Rwanda recorded the steepest decline in mortality ever recorded at any time in the world. Uh, in terms of access to care, 96% of people have access to health insurance, and that allows access to care without um, um, being constrained financially. In terms of uh, vaccination, we have a coverage of more than 94% vaccination across 14 vaccines uh, for kids. We've registered three quarters of reduction in maternal mortality, two thirds in infant mortality. Um, access to treatment, be it for HIV, TB, malaria, and other diseases has been um, shared across the country. And as a result of that, in the last 20 years, we've been able to increase the life expectancy by 20 years, moving from 50 to now 70 years of life expectancy. It comes with its own challenges. Uh, since a couple of years, we see death related to lifestyle diseases, uh, that's diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and cancers, overtaking death related to HIV, TB, malaria, and other diseases. It's a challenge um, that we are taking, all of us here together, to kind of move the needle further for Rwandans to live longer, healthier, and become more, more productive. That's where we are as a country right now, but a lot has been done to be able to achieve that. And I can't think of a better person who was there at the turn of event. Um, this new Rwanda at 30 that we are celebrating today, Paulin, you talked about when the university opened in 95, one of the first institutions that opened, and the University of Rwanda was one of the main brains to design the policies and implementation plans that allowed us to be where uh, we are today. Perhaps you can go back and tell us what are some of the key interventions, policies that were put in place um, to uh, let us be at this um, uh, stage today. Over to you. Oh, thanks, Ivan. I think when we reflect back 30 years, you know, we recall 1994, the Ru Rwanda lost, I would say, 80% of its um, human resources for health, including doctors. Some doctors committed genocide, some left the country, some uh, didn't want to be engaged. There are many people who are in the medical profession that couldn't go back to hospital because of the horror that they saw. So there was an urgence. I think I'll probably describe, you know, describe it very quickly into three phases, right? There is the first reconstruction phase that many uh, uh, Rwandans, both those who were in Rwanda and 
others who came back in Rwanda to actually start rebuilding the country very quickly. And the way they did it in a very smart way was to accelerate the reconstruction phase and then going very quickly to start building sustainable systems, the systems that will stay for the long term. And that started between, I would say, 2000, 2001 and two, when the government of Rwanda actually started asking donors to say, Yes, we know we are in an emergency phase, but now we, start, we need to start thinking about the long term. This is when the program like the community-based uh, insurance scheme started or the you know, performance-based financing program started, uh, etc. And the diaspora has been playing a critical role there. You know, every time when you send money to support your you know, family back home, uh, do you know how much it costs to cover one Rwandan for a year? How much in dollars? How much it costs the Mutuelle de Santé? It's one cup of cappuccino. <laughs> Just one cup of cappuccino. It's $4. You pay $4, it covers someone the whole year. And what it covers, actually, what the government of Rwanda has done so amazingly well, they use the Ministry of Finance money to actually cover for the poorest of the poor, so that the $4 gives them access to primary care, secondary care, up to King Faisal. They can have dialysis if they are part of the mutual. So the organization that diaspora have been doing actually to send money, a huge remittance has been instrumental. So continue to do those. And then during that phase as well, it was an amazing uh, like governance and leadership from the government of Rwanda to leverage money from PEPFA and you know, Global Fund. This is the US government has been contributing a lot of money. Rwanda is the best country that used that fund effectively to actually build uh, sustainable systems, etc. And then I will say the third phase now is what uh, Minister Iva, every time when you talk about four by four, I don't know if you, ex you need to explain that. Like every time I hear about any, uh, a new initiative from the government of Rwanda, I'm like, oh my goodness, are we going to achieve this? And every time we are proven wrong because they just get it and they achieve it. Yeah. Washington DC. Panelist I'll just say, just to make sure that uh, you imagine how young I am, given that the First Lady is here, I was among the Sirgwa Awadi when I was 35, so just, and then I'll pass it to Sinait. So take, take us for the next step, like what, what, what happened, and then Sinait, if you can help us to, given you are a global public health expert and, and someone who has been shaping the global agenda in global health, and you understand Rwanda in the perspective of globally like what do you see and then what i think you've really started playing a critical role in fixing the quality of the tertiary care in rwanda if you can just help us and then uh, let our colleagues as well contribute that would be really great thank you um maybe before that i will put an appeal to the diaspora in the room since we're talking to the diaspora i don't know how many of you are how many of you are confused diasporas but I was once a confused diaspora, right? Because when you come here from home, we usually come in search of education, opportunities, um, and then before you know it, you know, life just sort of takes a hold on to you, you become very busy, and you don't find meaningful ways to engage. Because when we think about engaging, we think about engaging sort of full time. One of the greatest lessons I have gleaned over the last four years living in Rwanda is how the diaspora, especially for those of you in the health field, but frankly in any other field, can contribute. And, and contribution doesn't necessarily mean you pick up and immigrate like I did, because you know not everyone, we all are in different uh, trajectories. But whatever you're doing, finding a way to connect. For those of you who are in social work, how can you come and teach social workers in the hospitals at the community health level to provide uh, better social care. Uh, if you are in public health, how do you come and connect with the School of Public Health? Even when you come 
um, once a week during the holidays. You spend two, three, four days lecturing, connecting to students. Um, you have no idea how impactful those little interventions are. But coming back to the question, you know, how do I see it currently? How do I look at it sort of moving forward? One of the most remarkable things about Rwanda is leadership, right? We've talked about leadership. You cannot underestimate the role of leadership. Um, you know, as I said earlier, I've worked in many, many places, and what is so remarkable is the level of clarity from the president about what every Rwandan deserves, right? It's not mediocre care, it's not low-level care. The, the, the expectation, despite limited resources, that every Rwandan deserves the best care. And that kind of mindset does a lot. So, you know, you mentioned 4x4. Four four. So, uh, and, and, and Minister Yvonne alluded to 4x4. Four four. So 4x4 four four is this incredible initiative that the government of Rwanda is embarking on, and we have the enormous privilege of supporting. The goal is to quadruple Rwanda's health workforce in the next four years. Nurses, doctors, uh, midwives, community health workers, social workers, therapists, and this ambitious goal it seems so um, simple on paper. If we follow the current trajectory, so around the world, according to the World Health Organization, there is shortage of 18 million health work workers, and these are mostly in sub-Saharan Africa. So like many countries around the world, if Rwanda continues at the current pace, of training limited number of nurses and midwives and doctors, it will take us, Minister Yvonne, what about how many years? 185 years to reach the minimum goal. And the government of Rwanda said this is unacceptable. We are not going to accept this. So we are mobilizing partners. We're looking into the diaspora. We're looking to every citizen, the business community, development partners to say, how do you collaborate with us to scale up training? Uh, and just to give you a flavor, in the last four years, we've launched over 10 subspecialty training program. Uh, for the first time in Rwanda, for example, a person who's looking for kidney transplant no longer has to leave Rwanda in search of renal transplant. So this goes to show you, from this to vaccine manufacturing, when you look at Rwanda, the agenda that we set for the population are not small goals. It is not to really compare ne ourselves to our neighbors and say, how are we doing? We are really looking at it and saying, what is the best standard of care and how do we achieve that? So it's really been remarkable for me um, at a personal level, at a professional level, to see the change that are taking place from community health centers that are now receiving blood products and contraceptive commodities using drone systems to the tertiary care hospital that is providing um, outstanding care. So during the middle of COVID, um, soon after I arrived, I was very sick and I was in the ICU. Um, I had the means to get on a, either a commercial or a charter plane and come back to the United States. And I did not do that. So whether it's myself or my children, the goal is to create, and what we have frankly right now is an outstanding healthcare system that will provide the best care for every citizen. It does not mean that we don't have problems. It does not mean that we are not moving forward. We still have a long way to go. But frankly, by any comparison right now, for myself and for my family, we get outstanding quality health care in Rwanda, in Kigali, that does not require us to get on a plane and travel. So maybe from here, I'm going to give Nadish an opportunity to talk about what should we expect from brilliant young Rwandans like you who are um, have the opportunity to do uh, cutting-edge research in one of the best facilities in the world, at Harvard and MIT. So, so what are some of the lessons you have gleaned and what are some of the perspectives you've gained that you want to share with the young diaspora in the room? Yes, thank you, this was nice. Um, so 
We've heard all about the amazing accomplishments that we saw like in Rwanda and always remembering, just like Dr. Abdallah said earlier, how different, like more developed countries, let's say in bigger continents, had centuries to get there, while us, within just a few decades, we got there. So that's pretty amazing um, to see. And behind every great um, public health um, improvements, we also have advances in terms of research. So res like in research, we're always trying to find ways to improve diagnostic approaches, uh, treatments, um, like also like access to um, uh, all these this facilities that where we can have people being treated. And so I like to talk about a bit more about my uh, career pathway. So I started with my studies here um, in Rwanda, and I was also always curious about um, what is happening in other countries. What can we learn from other countries in order, of course, to bring it back home? Um, and so I decided to go to college and university uh, in Europe. Um, I did my PhD there as well, always um, keeping in touch with different researchers in Rwanda to see how can I adapt the research that I'm doing in order to fit the needs in Rwanda, but also what can I learn from Rwanda? Because we've seen incredible development in such a few years, so that we also have a lot um, to, to, to show, to show off to show <laughs> different countries. Um, and then, so yes, yeah, so I went to, to Europe for that, and just a few years ago, um, I arrived in Boston, where I'm doing postdoctoral studies on immune disorders, so biology. Uh, we're working on different diseases, we work on infectious diseases, autoimmune disorders, cancer, um, and something that really um, uh, is really important to mention about all this pathway is the support that I got within my own community. So instead of just looking at what others are capable of doing, we can also look within our network. Uh, we always have people within the Rwandan community that can help us, that can guide us, and even inform us on everything that we can do remotely while also and always collaborating uh, with Rwanda. And like for example, a personal story that I had, um, I remember after my PhD, I was, not during my PhD, I was invited uh, in Paris to, it was a L'Oréal UNESCO uh, gathering where they were giving awards to incredible women who did great work. Um, and I remember there was Professor Romain Morenzi, and I was telling him how hard the PhD was and how I thought that I had learned enough. And after the PhD, I was, I was good. I had done enough. You know, I just wanted to go back home, uh, be with my family. And his reaction was so memorable. He really told me, but what do you mean? Like, no, you're here. You have to continue. Go further. You know, it's, it's really about uh, knowing that you are capable of doing it. Uh, always keeping in touch with people within your network. And something to really emphasize on is that you need your network to move forward, but you can also be an important um, person for other people, and then you can really help them. Sometimes just by putting two people in touch, just sending um, an email, just by giving a few advice, helping for a CV or something. I've been talking to someone on LinkedIn who just reached out to me just because he's run these and he said, it's great what you're doing, can you help me? So just by helping a little, you have no impact, no idea of how big of an impact you can have with different people. So I really want to encourage the diaspora, but also people living in Rwanda, do not underestimate um, the, the power that you can have within your own community. So let's start there and um, yeah, learn from others. And also remember that people have to learn from us. And also something important, uh, when I was talking to um, Stella earlier, I realized how the work that her university is doing is so close, they are collaborating with Harvard, um, so, which is amazing. We can work in the US, in the Rwanda, be connected. That's how we, be, we are part of the development. It's really via the different collaborations that we develop and we keep, we, we maintain, because it's not everything to just have a collaboration. We have to keep using it, um, um, have it grow even more. And, um, and in Harvard, we even had an email last year about the work that was done with uh, Salaz University, Global Health Equity, uh, showing everything that they are doing in Rwanda. And you, I was so happy and so 
proud to see that even in Harvard, we all got this email. Every uh, Harvard affiliate got an email say, talking about the work that is being done in Rwanda. It was so amazing. And so Stella knows more about it, and she'll be able to tell you more about it. Yeah. I mean, it's an incredible time to be in Rwanda, uh, especially I want to mention that tomorrow is World Cancer Day. It will be a shame not to mention what's happening in Rwanda. Today, 10 years ago, uh, when uh, cancer was just a death sentence in Rwanda, but today, if you go to Rwanda, you not only have the best care in terms of like cancer care, but you also um, have access to it as well. So no matter what, this partnership with Partners in Health and the University of Global Health Equity is really anchored in equity. Equity is a big word that we kind of throw around, but what we're trying to say is, no matter what your background is, whether it be social economical, whether it be um, the gender, whatever it is, nothing is going to determine your health outcomes. And I think that's the biggest thing that Rwanda has achieved so far. No diseases is going to hold you back. And you are going to have also the best treatment in terms of universal health coverage with the Ministry of Health. But another thing to say is, like, if you want to change the health system, the incredible things that Rwanda has done, it has also become a training ground for other countries to learn from us. Now I work for a university that is, I don't know if I mentioned that, but that is number eight. That is, was ranked number eight in, in Africa. And that's a big thing. Being ranked number eight for a university that just started just about 10 years ago, it's how you see what the impact is. We have now applications that go as far as Australia to come learn from the model of Rwanda in terms of like global health delivery. And when you think about the University of Global Health Equity, it's in the four by four strategy as well that uh, Minister Yvonne mentioned, it's not only about quadrupling and the quantity aspect, we have to think also about the qualitative aspect. What kind of doctors are we putting out, out in the world? And that's what Rwanda and also with the, the partnership with Partners in Health want to ask. What are the values a doctor should hold with all the problems that the world has now so that any kind of injustice has a cure? So our medical students for the first year don't even touch biology courses. What they learn is about social medicine. How do you treat a patient holistically, considering gender, considering uh, community, considering all kinds of aspects that are social determinants of health? So I think Rwanda is establishing great strides with the partnership with foundations such as Susan Buffett, Belinda, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to really rethink what kind of health professionals are going to deliver the care that Africa needs tomorrow? People with the right values, the values that no life matters more than another, that your, your background should not de you know, determine your outcome in terms of health. And all of that is done somewhere, I don't know if I can even paint you a picture, have any and what would you ask like why a state-of-the-art medical facility and a world-class education facility will be based in the most rural place that you can imagine well because impossible is not random obviously I think Yvonne said that but also you have students there who are going to learn how to deliver the best quality care in a resource limited setting do you know what that means no world problem is out of reach for Rwanda to solve because you have professionals who have the right values, world-class education, but also who can be, let's call it scrappy in terms of like solving problems. And that's what Rwanda has done amazingly in the past 10 years, in the past 20 years for Partners in Health when they started to deliver medical health care with the philosophy that is no one should be left behind whether it be something as expensive as cancer care or something so basic as giving childbirth or something so advanced such as an ICU, ICU stay if you have respiratory disease. And I think this is something remarkable you should all be proud of. But also I want to encourage all of you to think of um, beyond even partnership. How can every Rwandan diaspora be a partner? Because as uh, Paula mentioned, it's 
four dollars to a, a cappuccino to cover like uh, the health system. So in terms of partnership, we don't have to also rely on big foundation only, but all of you can actually contribute to this work actively. And we, ha we all have a mission to say. For instance, I'm, I'm an engineer turned storyteller communication sitting on a panel of doctors. I'm not a doctor, but yet I'm contributing to the health system. No, I'm, I'm going to disagree a little bit with that because <laughs> one thing, so there is, um, I was taking a cab from DC, so I'm staying in DC to come here. And then my cab driver said, what is happening? There are a group of people coming to this place. And then I said, no, it's Rwanda day. And then, and then she said something that really stuck with me. She said, oh, wow. They are different kind of people. They are polite, they are well-dressed, they are not overweight, they are well-mannered. Oh yeah. So then, <laughs> you see these two young ladies, they are big deal. You know, she works for Ragon University, it's a Harvard and MIT collaboration, but but this is a big deal. This is Rwanda today, this is happening. We should clap for them, you know, and as part on part of the foundation and you know the work that she's done like she sent a tweet recently can you talk a little bit about that tweet we talked about it in the board of UGHC what oh, happened yeah. yeah I was pretty proud because it's one thing to work for an organization as a comms person to say oh yeah we are training the next global health leaders but recently I got the honor to draft and also in the moment I was going to press send to the tweets six people alumni I'm not including you Yvonne but Alumni were, you know the yellow paper. Does anyone know the yellow paper here? I think everybody knows the yellow paper. <laughs> so there were six of our alumni who were actually nominated in the yellow paper as leaders in the health system. And that, for me, this is what you, you call change. Yeah. That was a very proud moment. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll pass to tonight later, but I want to move away from the $4. I don't want to be known as the guy who asked the diaspora to send only $4. <laughs> Let's put some perspective. Last year, 2023, diaspora around the world sent 470 million US dollars to Rwanda as remittances. And that is more than you know, all eight combined. Buffett and Gate and the World Bank and USA, they all combine. We are, we can actually do even more. Then I was chatting with uh, someone from the uh, big car here, and then I asked, like, what is, what is really happening in Rwanda? Why we are not sending more money? I think the government needs to do more to remove a lot of fees. And then the second, we as diaspora, we need to invest more in our country. Because we live in America, we work and we are paid in dollar. We have access to cheap capital here. You can actually get a loan for, you know, six, seven percent. I hope they are fixing inflation and it will go down a little bit. And then send money and invest in Rwanda and our bank can lend it to 13, 14, 15. So let's just think about going beyond the remittances. We all do world remit, etc. We send money to our friends. Like we're on WhatsApp, not to tanga contribution, Yamakwe, Yibirio, Jose Trabioheres. But let's try to think a little bit beyond that. Can we have an account? Can you think about retirement? Kongewins are retiring. That home, we need to think more about that, like sending even more money to do bigger things. So. Sure. I'm not going to ask you to put more money because Poland has done that. Uh, but let that sink in. That's uh five close to right like 500 million dollars half a billion dollar coming from the diaspora so that's just truly incredible but i think i know president kagame will agree with me um this is rwanda day but i think it's beyond rwanda day frankly it is africa day every time i hear him speak he speaks for rwanda and africa and as an african and I know there are many uh, non-Rwandans in this room, French of Rwanda, uh, other African diaspora. I know I've seen so many of my Ethiopian colleagues here. And what is remarkable about Rwanda is if you look at, it's frankly in my entire life, I've lived short and long term in many, many parts of the world, in Asia and Africa and, and, and North America. 
It's the one place that is non-sectarian, non-tribal, where I, for the first time in my, my 50s, I have found a sense of belongingness. And that is so powerful, right? To belong is powerful. And for Rwandans, but for friends of Rwanda, we were, Yvonne and I on, on, a, on our way here was um, talking to a friend that we hope will be joining us back in Rwanda uh, soon. But many of you, other African diaspora, come and serve. And when you are in Rwanda, you will see that Rwanda is not positioning itself only for Rwanda, but for the rest of Africa. So right now, at King Faisal, for example, you know, we are, and, and the same in Butare, we're serving patients from Burundi, from Uganda, from DRC, from Congo, from everywhere. It doesn't matter. Like, we are agnostic to politics. We are focused on humanity. So it is really, look at it at a place to go and leave your human values. So my appeal is to all of you in the room to contribute in every uh, possible way you can for the development of Rwanda and look at it it's for development of Africa and the development of humanity. And to add on that, um, I think that yes, of course, let's come back, bring to our, like, participate in the development of our country, just like I said, it's very important. And I'd say that here, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that all of us, we know about the value of our country. We know how important it is to stay in touch, um, bring everything that we can to our country. I think that no one here needs to be convinced about that. But I'd say that to add on this, in addition to come back to Rwanda and to contribute, something important is to learn about our country. Know everything that we've, has been done. Get your facts straight. Know about the numbers, because the biggest challenge is not to convince us, I think, because we know what we've done. We know where we came from and where we are today. It's really to know about the fact, educate ourselves, so that when we go abroad, when we talk about Rwanda and we want, because it's important to have collaborations, to have investors that come. It's how you share knowledge by collaborating. So the key part, the biggest difficulty that you will have will be to convince people outside of Rwanda to come. So I'd say that learn about Rwanda. I even like learned also about like the coverage for vaccine rates. Right? Like 95% of people who are vaccinated today, it's huge. It's 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 really big. So we need to know all the facts so that we can share them and prove ourselves outside of the world. I think um, going back to also adding to what you just said. As a person who works in comms and marketing, there is something that is so distinctive to me when I was studying in Canada that I remember. When you Googled Rwanda at that time, you would see terrible stories. You know, um, it's either about uh, genocide and all the ter terrible things that happened in our country, which is good to educate ourselves. But it was really the danger of a single narrative. But today, if you Google Rwanda, you see Visit Rwanda, you see all kinds of things. But there is another layer that needs to be told. And the layer that really needs to be told is the next phase of Rwanda, which is like the quality healthcare, but also the innovation, the technology that is happening. And all of you, we have a, as Rwandans a responsibility to educate ourselves, but I think as Rwandans, we are pretty good storytellers, I think just in general. <laughs> like when you go to any Gusawa, the stories that are there, even made up, it's quite incredible. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so I just really want to encourage everyone to Maybe just make, put that little juice, that little, you know, kawanga and also in the real stories, <laughs> you know? When you go out there, think of yourself as your vessel as well, someone who has to tell a story and about your country. And your, our story is your story. So the more you speak about Rwanda, the more, I would say as a comms person, the algorithm will be on our side. lady. <laughs> <laughs> Trashimira aba panelists bacu ariko kuko nanone um tuza gusangira ibitekerezo nabonye abenshi bafite ibitekerezo ndashimira imana ko mu myaka 30 ishize nibibazo byarashize abantu baratangira ibitekerezo reka rero mu binyemereye nya kwa first lady twakire muri ruya ruhande ibitekerezo bibiri hanyuma turaza kugaruka no muri ruhande abafite mic mudufashe abayobozi bakiri mu byicaro baraza kudufasha kusubiza Thank 
Hello. Um, my name is Vincent Butera. I'm uh, a global health, um, I guess, specialist. Uh, I work at the Center for Disease Control. And um, before I ask my question, uh, I want to add something on Paul's uh, title. Paul is a mentor. Some, uh, some few years back, and everybody from uh, the state of Washington will agree with this. If you work in global health, in health, and you go to Seattle, everybody will say, have you met Dr. Pollen? And when I was there, within two or three days, he was able to make time to meet me and give me some advice, and I've always uh, carried that at heart. So on those many group chats, I'm sure there's one where Dr. Pollen is always the mentor. So uh, Dr. Pole Aria uh, mentioned that in all the, uh, the analysis that you do at Gates Foundation, Rwanda always comes at the top as a high performer. And I want to emphasize that uh, on the success Rwanda has had over the past 30 years from high rates of HPV vaccines and uh, affordable universal health care and now UGH trying to train new doctors and, and things like that, I want to really also echo what you guys said about uh, the success that Rwanda has had over the 30 years. But to that, my question goes to sustainability. Over, over the past 10 or 15 years, the, geog uh, the geopolitical climate has changed, especially around funding. As we speak, PEPFAR, which has really contributed sustained, uh, in, a, uh, in a meaningful way towards HIV and other infectious diseases and uh, the Presidential Malaria Initiative, even PEPFAR is, is still on hold. It has not been ratified again uh, to be able to provide that kind of care to, to the mo mostly African uh, countries. So my questions on, on sustainability is what are we doing as Rwanda, maybe even if you can expand it to the African continent as a whole, to be able to put together processes that allow us to be able to sustain and fund our own health our health systems so that we, we really do not depend on, on whatever political party that is being elected in the U.S. or some capital in, in Europe. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Rakoze reka tukongere dusabe ko ujya kutanya igitekerezo yavuga izina akarasa ku ntego kugira ngo ducunguze uburyo umwete. Rakoze cyane. Hello. Yes. Uh, my name is Lucy Kalinda. Uh, I came all the way from uh, Ottawa, Canada. So I'm a medical doctor. Hi Canadians. <laughs> so I uh, thank you for this opportunity and I really thank this panel. I see one of uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Pole uh, Basinga. We worked like a couple years ago on a very specific uh, project. It was a collaboration between uh, the University of Ottawa and uh, the University of Butare. And it was uh, basically about HIV prevention, and I was coordinating that project, and he was doing the same thing the other side. So, basically, I, th I hear like an invitation uh, from the panel for health experts to contribute, and this is really has been in my mind and my, in the mind of most of uh, other doctors. So I am also, besides being a medical doctor, I am also a wellness expert. And I just launched a book on Amazon regarding how to help like mothers, young moms, to cope with stress. It's all about stress management. It's um, providing really concrete tools on how to handle stress and find a life balance uh, between work, family, and also self-care. So I also heard recently our president, the Excellency uh, Paul Kagame, talking, educating people about lifestyle. 
nutrition, diet, exercising, really how to build a healthy and wealthy community. Myself, at my personal level, I really would like to be in the death agenda, the wellness agenda. If uh, in our country has like a whole um, wellness agenda, uh, I'd like to contribute at my personal level. I'd like to be part of that team that can really um, move, move. And, and I also, I know it's very, very important today to try to integrate artificial intelligence. And really, if we can build up a wellness hub as maybe a pilot project, and the wellness hub will really um, will be able to bring, a, to, to build those tools, analyze data, um, bring like IT team and uh, other experts in the wellness, and really find a, a, a good project, even a bot, to be able to help decision makers um, really uh, have tools they can really help build a population with evidence, science-based evidence tools. Thank you. Uh, my name is Valentine. I'm a doctor in training here in the U.S. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our country for this great opportunity to be able to hear about everything that's going on in our home country. And I do hope to finish here and be able to go home and contribute to um, the health care there. Um, I have a question regarding cervical cancer. Uh, as of the latest re report, it is the second highest cancer in women in Rwanda. And before I moved to the U.S., I had never heard of, uh, of pap smears, which is a screening method for early diagnosis for screening cancer. And so today I'm asking, is there something that Rwanda is doing, some early screening method to be able to um, decrease that, that number that is really on a high rise? Um, if you look at numbers in the U.S., once they started to do pap smear at the age of 21 for women, it has significantly decreased the number, um, the rate of cervical cancer, or it is caught early enough so that people are treated and um, recover well. So my question is regarding um, what methods are being implemented to um, decrease that rise of a cancer that can be helped. Rango tu yego suiza panele sijambo ba suiza muminota itarenzi tano dusoze iki chichiro murakoze chano. Maybe I'll take the first one and then we can share. We can share questions. So I think the first one was about sustainability. I think tonight you said it very well. When President Kagame think about providing health care to Rwandans, he doesn't think about sustainability because he has, you know, we've been proven wrong all the time. When we started the, uh, launching the Mutuel. I don't know if you remember the Mutuel National Health Insurance Scheme. Rwanda was told, oh no, you are, you know, this, you know, you need, you need to be voluntary. You should not force people. It's against human rights. You remember at that time when you were going to ask for your passport, they will ask you, did you pay for your Mutuel? Because if you can travel abroad, then you, it means you can pay for your Mutuel. But then today we have more than 90% of Rwanda that are covered, right? And it's just, the sustainability in global public health has been something that has been holding us behind. The solution to that, I think, is innovation. We need to innovate and try to leapfrog, try to find ways to do things cheaply and faster. You know, Ambassador Fraser is here. PEPFAR is one of the best gifts that the U.S. government has given to the world. That has been an amazing. When I was a young medical doctor uh, in, in, you know, working in the Seashika, uh, uh, which is the, you know, uh, teaching hospital in Kigali. Back in 2000, 2001, we used to have 120 patients with opportunistic disease, TB, HIV, without ARVs. And when they will call you at night, I was chatting with my colleague, we remember that, you'll have to go to see patient number 85, you have to go through, you know, their casserole and the people who are, you know, without even the means to do anything. But today, last night, Dr. Tarsis was telling me only 48 patients with mostly 
other three tabernacle non-communicable diseases. We've almost, you know, malaria, we used to have six million cases a year. Today, 500,000 cases. TB, uh, I think there are some breakthrough innovation that are happening in terms of vaccine. So the more we innovate, we will provide service cheaper, we can move. So if we start thinking about sustainability, we just need to go. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but I think in addition, um, our colleague from CDC, you absolutely acknowledge the role of PEPFAR and, and other donors. And as a donor, I'll tell you, uh, there's a lot of buzz in the donor community, and sometimes we sort of deceive ourselves that we finance health. The data is very clear. Over 85, 90% of health is financed by government. So let's not forget that. So Rwanda's progress, yes, there have been catalytic funding from amazing partners, from bilateral donors, private philanthropy, but what is sustaining Rwanda right now is government funding and innovation. When you look at Zipline, when you look at um, Society for Family Health, uh, we collaborated with the First Ladies Foundation in Bhutto to put out almost a thousand uh, private public partnership for uh, for uh, health posts. So it's that kind of innovation. It's that kind of thinking outside of the box. I mean, you know, they say you um, don't fall to the level of your goal or ambition. You fall to the level of your systems. And what Rwanda has done very well is set up systems and institutions. So I think we have to keep ourselves clear because we can easily fall into this narrative that what's going to happen to us when donor funding dries. Rwanda has very little donor funding. And the country is very grateful for those that are there, are supporting and working, but the country is innovating with its constraints, as you talked about, uh, coming up with incredible uh, solutions, technology. You know, Rwanda was at the forefront of telemedicine, reaching uh, using Babel, the, the, the company that has now collapsed, but nonetheless, Rwanda takes risks, it invests and it innovates, and that's how we ensure health is sustainable. And I think the other thing we didn't delve a lot into today is the role of private sector. Um, there is incredible opportunity to grow and engage the private sector to um, allow quality care for those who don't want to use the public system, right? So I think we have to sort of change our thinking a little bit and not think donors, although we would like to think we do so, <laughs> run these countries. <laughs> And, and, and as a gynecologist, I'm really dying to talk about HPV. And the only one thing I will say is, again, Rwanda for years now has been vaccinating over 95% of its girls. It's probably one of the only countries in the world with such high level of uh, HPV. And the real way to tackle cervical cancer um, from the get-go is vaccinating people and protecting them. But I would let Minister Yvonne talk about the actual other screening and diagnostic and therapeutic services and av available in the country. Yes, so maybe we can use the case of cervical cancer to s show how you approach an issue at, um, a, at a health system base. Uh, prevention is the first one. Um, as um, Sinait has talked about, more than 95% of our girls are vaccinated uh, against HIV. And uh, it's a program that is HPV, sorry. <laughs> Some Something is also in the pipeline for, for HIV. I'm sure you've learned about, you, you've heard about the first um, top-end technology in terms of vaccine, the mRNA technology that we, most of us use uh, against COVID. Um, the first plant in Africa uh, was launched uh, a month ago in Rwanda, the BioNTech Africa in Rwanda. So back to cervical cancer, prevention is the first one. and. and um, um, I don't know if, if you know, but the First Lady uh, who's here with us today is a champion of cervical cancer elimination in Rwanda, and we thank her for that. So from prevention, you move to screening from what you're saying, and how do you look at it? We want to massively screen people close to the community. You don't need to go to your gynecologist to do your test. So what in Rwanda we do with innovative technologies that we're investing in, one that is um, top-notch and that we call for your support to scale, is HPV DNA testing. So for us, we do it at the level of the health center. These are nurses that are trained to roll out this technology so that you're able to screen, not only screen and know, but know the specific type of uh, the HPV um, strain that you might have that definitely influences 
the treatment. But you go beyond that. What if a person has been diagnosed with cervical cancer? So in Rwanda, we've invested into uh, a facility that can provide radiotherapy. We have two uh, advanced machines at our Rwanda Cancer Center to provide treatment for women uh, that have already um, crossed that line and, and, and moved to the cervical cancer phase. But that's not enough. How do you sustain that is that you train people. And what we talked about earlier, the 4x4 program, last year we, trained, uh, we launched a program that trained Rwandan doctors, um, f uh, specialists in women uh, cancers. It's the first time that we were launching it in Rwanda. So not only you prevent, you screen, you diagnose, you treat, but you train the workforce that will um, maintain the dignity uh, of these women without really need uh, uh, to travel abroad or to spend uh, a lot of resources. And, and all that care is under the umbrella of the community-based health insurance that we talked about, the mutual that we talked about. And I think we can, thanks for raising that up, using the cervical cancer case end-to-end -end, uh, delivery, but this is translated into all the other uh, uh, diseases that we, that we have. And you know that tomorrow is World Cancer Day. It's a big deal. And you know, just to add on the cervical cancer, because there's a beautiful story about the effectiveness of implementation that you see in Rwanda. Uh, you know, in many countries in the world, many girls in low and in, in middle income countries are not vaccinated. The HPV vaccine is not even introduced in country. I don't know if you knew that. But do you know what is the proportion of Rwandan girls that are vaccinated? 96% because of the multi-sectorial partnership between the Minister of Health, Minister of Education, Minister of Local Government, Minister of Finance, etc. The effectiveness that the government work as one government has really helped. So I work at the Gate Foundation. We, did a, we funded a study to try to see because normally we were using two doses of HPV vaccine and we proved that only one dose is enough to provide the same protection. So this helps you to actually cut costs and manage implementation very quickly. And then Rwanda moved very quickly into one dose. And now this month, next month, uh, in Colombia, we're collaborating with UNICEF to have a big HPV meeting. And Rwanda will be there to show this, the, the success because many countries are starting to shift. Even changing a policy to shift from two dose to one, it's inama, retreat, you know, begin she can. But Rwanda, it moves very quickly. I think that helps. And also the story of um, viral hepatitis C, maybe if you can talk about that, Minister. It's almost eliminated. I lost someone very dear to, to me in hepatitis 2009, hepatitis C. You remember, we used to send our parent to Nairobi to take interferon. You remember that? Try to look for hepatitis C in Rwanda today. Almost none. It's so just that the quality of care that we can provide when we work collectively. Yeah. Thank you so much, to. Thank you for the brilliant responses and thank you all for the great questions you're asking. Again, I'll give an opportunity for just one more question. We have a question from someone on this side and this will be Bernadette Dennis. Uh, please go ahead and ask your question and remember to make it quick. Can we get a mic to Bernadette Dennis? Could someone get a mic to her, please? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well? So I really don't have a big question, but what I want to share with you I am sure you heard about the good things happening with healthcare in Rwanda. You heard them, I heard them. What I did not hear is someone saying thank you to the people who helped to turn around the healthcare system to the better. Can you please join your hands and do that? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is... Uh, Bernadette Dennis, I am a registered nurse here. I am originally from Rwanda, so 
for us, Rwandan healthcare professionals, we are not saying thank you by clapping hands, by giving cappuccino, but what we are going to do to say thank you to people who had hand in turning the healthcare system in Rwanda the way it is, we are from June 1st to June 15th, we are conducting a medical mission to Rwanda to give back to our country. So we are going to join other healthcare professionals at bedside, hands on. We are going to share their, our skills with them, our experience, and 15 days are not enough, but there's always a beginning to everything. So I'm sure there are so many healthcare professionals here. We are not limited only to Rwandans, so we are going with our colleagues, and every healthcare professional here, I'm hoping that she's going to say, hey, Bernadette, count me in. And if you are Rwandan, I'm also hoping that you are going to say, to Gende. Thank you very much. That's amazing. Uh, Thank you so much, Bernadette Dennis. Me. Just quickly, I see Michael Fairbanks at the front row. And Mike, I, mean, I know, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but you're a friend of Rwanda, and uh, Akagera Medicine has launched vaccine production. So I would love to hear from you. What was it about Rwanda? What values? What drove you and your company to invest in Rwanda? Oh, th thanks, Sinead, for that opportunity. Um, and a lot of people are going to be happy that you asked me this question because I'm going to make a job offer now to every young Rwandan <laughs> with a science PhD, a medical degree, an interest in business development in the science sector to come back to Rwanda this year and next year because we just raised 12 million euros that we need to spend in Rwanda on capacity development. <laughs> so what Mike, I, need, I didn't even know that. Thank you. didn't you. even know that. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, th th this goes double for you if you want to leave the NGO. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so. I'm shameless. <laughs> what I want you to know is that Akagera Medicines is the only African-owned, Rwanda-owned biotechnology company we have five vaccines, two drugs. We're entering human trials in April. And we have grants from the Gates Foundation, the European Investment Bank, the European Union, CEPI, which is the Norwegian-based Center for Ec Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. And we're going to announce in a few more months a $40 million investment in us from one of the great academic consortiums in the world. This year, we'll deliver our plans to our majority owner, the Rwanda Social Security Board, on our development plans for the next couple of years. So I think Regis is here, the head of the RSSB. I think he's here somewhere. So what's really cool about that <clears throat> is that all 14 million Rwandan citizens own Akagera Medicines. And if you were to return to Rwanda in the next couple of years and start paying into that system, you'll be an owner too. So thanks very much. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. And thank you again so much to our brilliant panelists, brilliant healthcare experts. Um, and thank you to the questions that were asked. and. I have to say, this is truly the power of an event like this. You get job offers, so y'all better be taking those jobs. And you have people rallying other Rwandans, rallying friends of Rwanda, healthcare experts to go to Rwanda and contribute to what's happening in the country. Thank you so much. We appreciate that.
And so as you've seen for yourselves, Rwanda is truly a role model for healthcare equity. And this is not only on the African continent, but also in the world. We're setting an example for the world on what it looks like to center people in healthcare equity, to advocate for the quality of healthcare that everyone deserves. And this is powerful. It reminds me of one of the community health initiatives that we have, the bi-monthly car-free day. Anybody been there? The car-free days? I mean, where else do you see that? People run, exercise together, get free healthcare testing. This is incredible. And so I hope to you all, and again, you've seen so many young people in this room. You've seen young people here on this floor. I think this is a call to young people in this room, and I know some of you probably ask yourself, well, I'm a young person, I live in the US, what is my role, what should I do, where do I come in, I have this expertise. Talk to these young people that you've seen and make sure that you commit to contributing to what's happening. Um, and I will also add to remember, as they say, to stay humble, despite having all the expertise, and tell that Rwandan story, make it spicy. All right. So with that, with that, I also have the honor of introducing our next session, our next group of brilliant panelists. And like I said earlier, we have so many exciting events in store for you. Like I said, we have so many exciting events for you. Um, and also, just a reminder that, you know, we were joined by the First Lady of Rwanda, Janet Kagame, who also happens to be a champion of healthcare equity. So it's amazing that she joined this session in particular. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I will now introduce our next speaker. The first speaker is going to be someone with many titles. He's the vice chairman and the president of Toronto Raptors. And also, <laughs> he's also the Giants of Africa founder. And this is going to be Masai Ujiri. Welcome to the floor, sir. Here in franchise history with the second most wins in the NBA. Moreover, the launch of the We the North campaign served as a unifying rallying cry, uniting a nation under a common purpose. His collaborations with Toronto rapper Drake to revitalize courts in marginalized communities, 
his partnership with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to offer solace to the students affected by the 2016 Lalash Saskatchewan tragedy and his outspoken advocacy for social justice issues all exemplify his commitment to advancing humanity's greater ideals. A dream deferred no longer. In 2019, the Toronto Raptors became NBA champions. But we wanted to win in Toronto, and we were born in Toronto! Yeah! From aside, this is only the beginning, an inspiring story of a vision that transcends trophies. Through Giants of Africa, Masai made a commitment to build 100 courts across the continent, partnering with influential figures such as President Barack Obama. In the summer of 2023, the organization commemorated its 20-year anniversary with the Giants of Africa Festival, the largest African youth sports event dedicated to education and empowerment, uniting thousands from all corners of Africa. And Masai has recently established the Zaria Group, a pan-African investment and development enterprise aimed at catalyzing Africa's sports, entertainment, and cultural economy. This platform seeks to become an architect of a modern African renaissance through building arenas and the ecosystems around them. Masai's story is a call to action. Win, give generously. Lead authentically and seek excellence in all arenas, inspiring the next generation of leaders on and off the court. Thank you. I think this is the mic I'm supposed to be using. Wow. Wow. I can say this. I'm home. I'm home. Uh, Her Excellency, um, I'm just going to say all protocols observed. Um, wow. Wow. I. I'm overwhelmed because um, Africa is moving, and you know, I, the topics that have been spoken about here um, have been really incredible, but I'm so proud, so proud that we have people that are moving us in the right direction on the continent. The only thing I'll say, I'm going to be I think he used the word shameless. I'm going to be shameless here a little bit too and say, I'm coming to speak for sports and entertainment. And when we speak about sports and entertainment, the energy in the room changes. <laughs> mm. Mm. There's something about sports, entertainment, that brings us together. It brings peace, makes us smile, makes us happy, makes us compete, makes us joyous. If I said today, if I said today, Rwanda is playing against Ivory Coast in Afghan, and they're showing it in the next room, none of you will be listening to me right now. <laughs> That's the power of sports, yes. And I'm so proud, so proud that we have a president, we have someone, we have a presidential family that sees the importance of sports. Because in Africa, we treat sports as leisure, and we haven't yet seen sports as a business. Okay. We still treat it as leisure and competition, 
And competition is great. Competition is what we want. But the opportunity that God has given me as a son of Africa to play basketball as a youth and to come to school in the States and to be in the position that I am, I see it and I know what investments are made in sports and entertainment. So, I'm going to tell you a story. In 2016, um, I invited um, the first family to the All-Star Game in Toronto. It was unbelievable. Everybody, this incredible arena we have where I work, Kobe Bryant, Drake, everybody, Steph Curry, anybody that you can think of was there. One of the best dunk contests that's ever been held, okay? It was one of the coldest days in Toronto ever. And so His Excellency came, he sat down, and he was consuming, he was watching, and he put his head down and we were inside the suite, and my wife and Anj Kagame came to me and she said, go check on His Excellency. And I thought maybe because of the cold he was sick or something. <laughs> and I went to him and I said, Excellency, is everything okay? And he said, yes, and he put his head down. I talk like him, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> That's my guy. And he says, yes. Masai, can you tell me how much it costs to build an arena like this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 That arena is the arena you saw in the video, correct? Visionary. Yeah, visionary. Visionary, I say it again. Yes. He didn't only think of that arena. He thought about the stadium. He thought about the ecosystem around it. Okay? sports business, sports medicine, restaurants, anything you can think of, hotels, all those things are that ecosystem. Yes, I see my arena. When everybody comes, they watch a game, they want to eat, they want to buy merchandise, they want to eat hot dogs, they want to drink a beer, they want to go out after, they want to see other games in a sports bar, right? It's that ecosystem. It's something we haven't understood in Africa. You know why? It is the biggest, biggest challenge for us because we have the best athletes in the world. Yes. We have the best entertainers in the world, okay? So listen to this, listen to this. Davido. Thames. Tiwa Savage. Burner Boy. You can name, you can continue going diamond. You keep going and you keep going and you keep going. Okay? No arena in Nigeria. No arena in Accra. No arena in Nairobi. No arena in Johannesburg. No arena in Abidjan. How is it possible? I want Bruce Melody to be able to go. Hey, I see you, brother. I see you. I see you. 
I want Bruce Melody to be able to go to Uganda and play in an arena, go to Tanzania, play in an arena, go to Nairobi, play in an arena, and we have these tours around Africa, and me and you and everybody will have jobs. People, people will have work. It will create a movement. It will create an economy for us. It will create resources for us in an incredible way that I've seen. Here, think about it. Think about the NBA. Think about the NFL. Think about college basketball. Think about the revenue. Every day, games, money, people watching, sponsors, naming rights. You can think of all of it. We have it in Africa. You know what Africa's biggest jewel is? Africa's biggest jewel is its people. Yes, its people. Yes, because I go to Arsenal, how many Africans? I go to Chelsea, how many Africans? We go to Liverpool, soccer team. We go to Barcelona. We go to PSG. All of them, everywhere, it's Africans. Them, who won the last, the previous World Cup? Who came second in the World Cup? Africa did. <laughs> you guys get it? <laughs> I hope, I hope that we realize, I hope that we realize this. I'm going to queue up a video for you guys to watch very quick. Okay, two minute video, please. Step foot into the African arena. Imagine an Africa that does not participate in sports and entertainment, but defines it. We believe in the future of Africa and that the future is African. Africa's population will double in the next generation with two-thirds of the growth happening in cities. And with a median age of 20, this ambitious young continent will direct culture globally. This is an entire continent of booming fan bases that are consolidating into cities where their zeal is supporting new leagues and artists. This wave of new performers and athletes and the fans that support them demand platforms worthy of their passion. That's why we are going to build first to market world-class venues that meet the needs of the fastest growing consumer class in the world. This isn't, if you build it, they will come. They are already here and they are demanding places where they can convene, celebrate and compete. And so, we must build. We must build arenas that reimagine play and rethink sustainability, creating new models for arena development that transform the economy and build environments around them. Imagine state-of-the-art arenas rising amidst the bustling streets, places where dreams take shape and heroes are born. These arenas are more than venues. They become platforms and the lifeblood of communities, igniting aspirations and bringing people together. They uplift and galvanize local economies, creating countless opportunities for vendors, creators, and innovators. This is where the African spirit thrives, where every slam dunk, every goal, every note song elevates not just an individual, but an entire community. Together, let us build landmarks that stand as symbols of Africa's promise. Together, let us build infrastructure for an African renaissance. Together, let us build. I want to appeal to all of you in the diaspora um, to believe that you can dream. Yeah, we have to think. We have to think about the continent as we live here. There's no day, no day that passes. Every day 
in my job, whether I was a scout, whether I was a scout in Europe or traveling in Africa or traveling in Asia or anywhere, everything that came to my head was the continent yeah, and how we can grow and how we can continue to help. You don't have to have a lot of money. You don't. Just think. Think how you can help, even if it's your little brother. And don't live here and think that it is impossible. Because I'm telling you, what President Kagame is doing is a revolutionary in Africa. Yeah, it's vision. Yes. It's led a lot of us leaders to believe on the continent that it can actually be done. Yeah, no matter what is said here, no matter what is written here, yeah, we believe in who we are as people. Yes, we do. We strongly do. Yes, yes. Every room I walk into, I walk in tall, strong, with command as an African because I believe in who I am and where I come from and the people that got me to this point here. We have to, for our children, we have to. We have to think, we really have to think, yes, that we cannot listen to the narrative of our continent. Yes, we have the resources, we have the people, we have you. Yes, how many of you have been back to Rwanda and seen for yourself rather than read what somebody is going to come and tell me about it? Yes. With urbanization and with the growing demographic in Africa, the sky is the limit. Yes, the sky is the limit. Right? We need more than two arenas on the continent. Yes, we need more work. We need more people. Yes. So, my partners, Andrew, and all the people that help us work with this, Mama Kay, all your partnership, all the work with the youth, the youth, young women, young women on the continent is important for us. It's important for us to make them rise. Yes, it's very important. We cannot continue to preach it. And President Kagame has shown that with all the women I see, even in his cabinet. It's not all talk in Africa. We have to become doers, okay? We must be doers. The last thing I'm going to say is, um, I dreamt, I dreamt, and I always wonder, every day I go home, I'm driving home, I pinch myself, I thank God for my beautiful family, for my wife, my beautiful kids, and I pinch myself every day because they support me, they make me grow, friends you have around the world, the sports, and I pinch myself again, and I wonder, I always wonder, why did God choose me? And I know the answer. I found out the answer. He chose all of us. Yes, all of us. And we just have to find it. Yes, we have to find it. I know my obligations. I have to win. Yes, I have to win in my job. I have to win it as a husband. As a, I have to win. As a family man, I have to win as a leader. You win on the court, you win off the court, and as you do it, you bring people along, and you continue to bring them along, okay? God bless you, Rwanda, and God bless Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another round of applause for Masai Ushiri. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your powerful words and for inspiring us. 
I have to say, with every session, I don't know about you all, but with every session, I get so emotional. It's amazing how much our country has achieved in such a short time, and it's amazing to see all the things that are continuing to happen. And I, as a young person, I am so proud, and I know you all feel so proud today. Still on the theme of economic development through sports and entertainment, I will now welcome some pa panelists for our next session. I will now welcome Claire Akamanzi from NBA Africa, <laughs> who will be joined by Bruce Melody, a very own Rwandan musician. And they will also be joined by Eugene Uberijoro from Molson, Molson Coors. Thank you so much. And like I said, we have so many exciting sessions in store for you. Um, and so please stay excited. We're really looking forward to hearing from you all. Thank you for joining us today. Good afternoon, everyone. Excellency First Lady, it's a pleasure to have you here. You're making this uh, Rwanda Day very special for us. Now, talking after Masai Ujiri is a tall order. <laughs> Wasn't that a very powerful and inspiring speech? My name is Eugene Uberijoro, and I'm extremely honored to be part of this economic development panel, which is going to be focusing on sports and, and entertainment. I live and work in Dallas, Texas. It's always a pleasure for me to be back here in Washington, D.C., because this is where I went to school. Uh, Georgetown University is my alma mater. Let me give you um, a little snapshot of my uh, uh, professional journey. I started working in the uh, beverage industry 34 years ago with Baliroi in Rwanda. My career has spanned three continents, Africa, Europe, and the Americas. And I've held increasingly senior commercial and general management positions in Rwanda, the DRC, France, La Réunion, the US, the Netherlands, and Ethiopia. Today, I'm the regional vice president for Molson Coors, responsible for the central part of the US, and I oversee a, a business of $1.6 billion. <laughs> now, sports has always been a strong passion point for me. Uh, in high school, I was a captain of a varsity soccer team playing center midfield. While working for Baliroa, I played point guard for the company's basketball team. Nowadays, I enjoy long road cycling, and uh, thank God for Peloton, I'm able to jump on my Peloton three to four times uh, a week, and I also try to clock in at least one 10K run per week. When I was younger, I used to, to actually play basketball with uh, Minister Viruta, and believe it or not, Minister Viruta has a very sharp jump shot. I'm married, I have uh, three children. And although I've been an expatriate for the last 27 years, I do go back home almost every year with my wife who's here and my children. Going back to me, home for me is extremely important because that's where my roots are. Claire, Bruce, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Uh, Um, my name is Bruce Melody. I'm an artist, music artist. Uh, also, I'm a co-owner of a basketball team. Uh, United, United Generation Basketball, Changwase UGB. Uh, this is a great opportunity for me as a young Rwandan 
who has been in Rwanda since I was born. I'm now 31 years old. Who communist I I'm not young anymore. Nishimiye kuba ndaha ndino kumwe nabantu beza nkamwe. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency, First Lady, Honorable Ministers, and everybody. Good afternoon. So today is my 11th day as N NBA Africa CEO. If, if you asked me 11 months ago to imagine that I would be CEO Africa, NBA Africa, I would have said you're 11 times crazy. But speaking about the power of vision, that vision that started in 2016 with the president holding his head and asking about how to build an arena, that power of vision is the reason that I'm here today as the CEO of NB Africa. <laughs> when a country invests in a very bold way, opens opportunities that you'd never have thought imagined for a country, even us, Wanyar Gwanda, we benefit. And that's exactly what we see today. I spent the first 19, close to 20 years of my life working uh, for the government of Rwanda, focusing on private sector growth and economic development. And today I'm transitioning to the private sector. So thank you again and very good to be here. And to start our conversation, Eugene, Masai talked very clearly about the power of a sports economy. He talked about the facilities and what they do to create opportunities for people. And I think in Rwanda and the rest of the world, we've seen that in a very clear way. So you please start us off. What do you see as the opportunity? Where are the examples we can see? And how can we drive that home even more? Thank you. Thank you, Claire, for that question. Now, I discovered the power of sports and music with Heineken and Coca-Cola. Basically, these two multinationals have understood quite early that the best way to connect with consumers is through sponsorships of music and sports. Heineken does it with UEFA's Champions League or Primus Guma Guma. Uh, Coca-Cola does it with uh, the World Cup. But for these sponsorship deals to be meaningful, you need to have facilities, right? Now, I want to use two very powerful examples to illustrate my point. The first one, has to do with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, arguably, the Dallas Cowboys is probably one of those most valuable, valuable uh, uh, national football franchise in the country. Its owner, Mr. Jerry Jones, in 2009, decided to build a state-of-the-art stadium in Arlington, right outside of DFW, Dallas-Fort Worth. This stadium has a capacity of 105,000 people. It's nestled between two other stadiums, a baseball stadium and a college uh, uh, football stadium. Now, in 2018, some investors, a group of investors, smelled a great opportunity. They decided to basically create an entertainment venue called Texas Live. Google it. In a way, it's like Zarya Quartz. So what is Texas Life? Texas Life is a, a, unique, a unique, basically, a mix of entertainment, restaurant, and accommodation, which basically combines an amazing entertainment district. In the last five years, this small venue has morphed into a huge entertainment district attracting more than a billion dollars in business, in additional business, okay? So when Molson Coors partners with the Cowboys, Molson Coors is winning with consumers that go through Texas Life, Molson Coors is winning with consumers that go to the stadium, and Molson Coors is winning with consumers that buy their, our products in hotels, in supermarkets, and restaurants. A second powerful example I want to use here is the sphere in Las Vegas. Have you heard of the sphere in Las Vegas? Now, 
The sphere is in Las Vegas was just basically opened in September of uh, last year. It offers immersive experience through the use of cutting edge technology using massive LED displays on its exterior. Now the band U2, an Irish band, has been playing there since the month of September and they've been selling out their shows you know, ever since. The sphere is the definition of what entertainment is going to be for the next foreseeable, foreseeable future. The sphere has basically redefined what entertainment standards should be. Now, as Masai mentioned, these two examples illustrate how sports arenas, entertainment uh, stadiums can basically create an, an ecosystem. These two examples have basically paved the way for new businesses, new employment, new opportunities, investment opportunities, and they've shown how they can be a strong economic multiplier for the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Those are the examples I wanted to use, Claire. Now, Claire, can you tell us how the NBA can be an engine for economic transformation for Rwanda in particular and Africa in general? Thank you, Eugene. First of all, do we have any basketball fans here? Any NBA followers? So NBA has invested in Africa. And the reason that NBA has chosen to invest in Africa is because we just cannot ignore Africa. When it comes, first of all, to the numbers, the demographics, in 25 years, 25% 25 of the world population will be African. One in every four people in the world will be African. And while the rest of the world is aging, Africa is young. We have young people, we have youthful energy, and if any business is thinking about talent, thinking about skills, thinking about driving productivity, consumption, the consumer for the future, there's no way you can avoid Africa. And that's why NBA Africa chose, uh, the NBA chose to settle in Africa as well. But I think Masai did talk about excellence that Africa shows on the world stage. I think that's very true. 50 players in the NBA today are from Africa, either directly from Africa or one of their parents was born in Africa. 50 players, that's 10% of NBA. In fact, the reigning MVP, the most valuable player today, is Joel Embiid from Cameroon. I think that's an example of African excellence. But we don't see African excellence only in sports. We talk about sports and entertainment. If you look at African music on the world stage today, if you look at the arenas that Banner Boy can fill in New York, in London, if you look at the collaborations, you look at Chris Brown uh, uh, playing with Davido, you look at our very own uh, Bruce Melody with Shaggy on the world stage. That is African excellence. And it's not just in sports or music, but we see it in fashion. If you go to Paris or Milan, today you see African fashion. If you look at art, I was reading a New York, New York Times article recently, and for the first time, an African piece of art sold for one, more than $1 million was only 2004. Today, the 11 art pieces from Africa that have sold for $1 million and more. That is Africa's excellence on the world stage. Now, it's not just $1 million, but even in our own very Rwanda, tourists come to, from all over the world, and they go to buy art pieces. Many of you know Inema Gallery. If you look at the art pieces that Inema Gallery is selling to tourists that come to Rwanda, an average price of $10,000 for an art piece made in Rwanda, that can only grow, the price can only grow. Compared to traditional sectors like coffee and tea and vegetables that we grow, which are very important because we need agriculture, but how many kilos do you have to sell, do you have, do you have to sell of coffee or tea in order to make 10,000 from one art piece? This is the future of a creative economy, and I think Africa's excellence is very much clear on the world stage. And this is why Within the NBA, we decided to invest in Africa. And today, if you look at what we've put in place from junior programs for the very young uh, Africans from the age of 6 to 14, we have something called Basketball Without Borders that has produced, has drafted 10 players into the NBA. We have um, an, an NBA academy in Senegal. 
Now, very interesting is we have a Basketball Africa League, the only other league outside the NBA on the African continent. This year, we shall be going to our fourth season. And for the last three seasons, we've had the playoffs in Rwanda and the finals. But what is interesting, again, the power of vision is that when uh, the Basketball Africa League was going to start uh, in 2021, it was in the middle of COVID. The only country that gave uh, confidence that you can actually have a basketball league happening during COVID safely was Rwanda. So all the games happened in Rwanda at the time. There was an arena, there was a collaborating government, there was good management of COVID-19, and the successful launch of Basketball Africa League at the time means that today we're going to be starting the fourth season this year. Now, talking about music and talking about the Basketball Africa League, in our very first season, again, the intersection between sports and entertainment, the Basketball Africa League partnered with Bruce Melody and produced a song called Game On. Maybe we'll start by showing you a little bit before I hand over to Bruce Melody to give his comments as well. Game On. It's my failures, but I know I'll get there, yeah. They say game, yeah, but I'm a different player. Yeah. Swim with the sharks, but I stay underwater. Deep it's my snare, they were home. I gotta prove it, yeah. My life's a movie, yeah. They try to break me, but I'm never losing, yeah. Yeah, I'm paving my way. Problems sideways, I'm blowing now. a surprise <laughs> yeah uh, as I said I'm from Kigali I'm from Rwanda I was born and raised there and that's where I started my career as an artist uh, talking about entertainment facilities as, as, as you mentioned uh, it's it has been very very hard for an artist like me uh, to perform or to organize your own event. But you remember when I launched, I launched my 10 years event, like my 10 years celebration of my career in Kigali Arena. That's when I realized like our entertainment has been doing it for a long time. And I will say that uh, this, this entertainment facilities put our country on the global stage. It promotes our culture and those who come to get to our country, uh, they go back with our culture and they go back with uh, our music. That's, that's, that's how we become, we, we, we become promoted. I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the guy whose name is Steve, uh, he's uh, one of the member of the record label here in America, which is called Ace Carve Record. He had my music when he was in Kigali, and he he liked my songs. He contacted me, and now I'm working with Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. 
through, through that person. And that's where the, the collab with Shaggy came from. So, uh, back in the days, I used to go, when I started to travel, trying to promote my music, I used to go outside of the country. And when I said I'm from Rwanda, people used to confuse it. They'd be like, wow, you Rwanda, Uganda? And I'll be like, no, I'm from Rwanda. But now, here we are. Last year, I came here in America. I did my tour to promote my music. And everywhere I went, they know Rwanda. And they know us very well. So uh, it's, a, it's very, very good. Uh, as I said, I was born in 92. To some, at the, at, this, at the point I was like, maybe I was born in the wrong timing, or what, but not really because I'm happy that I have seen all these 30 years with my own eyes. I've seen the country growing. It was very hard for the last, last time because performing in front of people like you, people used to be sad to the point that you tell them to clap and they cannot. Through the entertainment and all this, we entertain people. People are happy back at home. Uh, have you heard about this comedy and music, basketball, football? So this, if, uh, if it wasn't the entertainment, uh, facilities, this is, could not be happening like this. Thank you. And, and maybe if I can come in there, I saw from the statistics that Francis uh, from RDB and his colleagues shared, uh, when you have facilities like those, it's not just about sports. Um, I think RDB just released their statistics. They've, they made 90, $92 million from mice holding events in Rwanda of which close to 15% were sports events. But when you have an arena like that, I think what we've seen also from Rwanda is that you host sports events, yes. You host music uh, concerts. We saw Kendrick Lamar and many others, Boys to Men, among others, come to Rwanda to participate in the arena. But we also see music, uh, gospel music, uh, Israel Mbonye filling up the stadium. <laughs> So from sports to you know, traditional music, gospel, and then you see Hunger Pitch Fest, a technology event in the, in the arena. So I think our message is when you have facilities like that, they're multi-purpose, they're economic driver, you can make money, 15% of mice uh, from uh, that. And this is what we're telling other countries as well in Africa. Don't look at it as sports only, look at it as an economic driver, and you can actually make money uh, from running these events uh, in your country. But it's not just the money, it's also the jobs. Come to think about what it takes to run uh, a league, a sports league, uh, like the Basketball Africa League. How many jobs do you actually create? You have players that play the game. You have coaches. You have referees. You have managers. You have medical team. You have nutritionists. You have sound engineers. You have camera people. You have lawyers because you have contracts to sign. You have marketing people. The number of jobs are just immense. And that's really the story. It's job creation. It's driving economic growth through events, among other things, but it's really a story of growth for the future of the continent. Now, you just heard Claire and Bruce Melody highlighting the importance of facilities. Now, so many people ask themselves, should we keep building these facilities in Rwanda? The answer is a resounding yes. Now, if you look at Rwanda and most African countries in general, there's a growing middle class with consumers who have evolving consumer needs and habits. The Rwandan leadership has been intentional in anticipating these trends and investing you know, ahead of the curve. Now, facilities like the BK Arena, the conference uh, centers, the hotels, they all create value today. They will create value in five years, in 10 years, even in 50 years. Now, we've been lucky. We've had a visionary leader in President 
Kagame, His Excellency President Kagame. He has provided us with a very clear vision, a strong, bold, and decisive leadership, which has allowed us to imagine what success can look like, how Rwanda can eventually host the world with all these facilities. Now, I want to make an ask of you members of the diaspora. If you have a skill in sports or entertainment, come and use it in Rwanda. Now, if you believe that you know, there are no, no opportunities, come and create them. Rwanda is open for business. Now, I want, before I conclude, I want to leave you with one final thought. Rome was created around a Colosseum. And by the way, the Colosseum was a venue for sports and entertainment. Today, almost 2,000 years later, tourists are still flocking to the Colosseum. The Colosseum is still being used as a stage for small concerts. So in other words, these facilities are critical to the economic development of our country, and we should keep investing in them because they create the brand that is Rwanda. Thank you for your kind attention. Well, I would like to speak to young people here. Uh, when we grow up, uh, by the time I was like, <laughs> I, I recall right now, Nitku Rwanda. Ejo harageze ubu noneho natwe dufite ubushobozi bwo gutekereza ku Rwanda rwejo tukarwi tukarwereka cyangwa se tukaruhingero z'uko Rwanda rwe kuba rumeze burakoze So if you want to play basketball and you're in this room and you're wondering how to start on the continent the opportunities for you in the Basketball Africa League through the local federations like Ferwaba, you can actually find out what you can do. We have private clubs like REG, APR, Patriots, among others. So please make sure that uh, your talent that you have here, you share it with us at home as well. So my call to you is you can play basketball on the African continent professionally and make money while at it. the panelists are true. first lady, Chiganiro Charichi ariko nkuko babivuga mu Kinyarwanda kabyose ntigahora mwitama turaza guhana none umwanya mugenzi wanje kugira ngo twakire ibitekerezo ibibazo se kugira ngo dusoze ikiciro cy'anyuma cy'ibiganiro byaberaga muri iki cyumba murakoze Thank you so as we said we're going into our Q&A session we'll begin with two questions we have two people with burning questions already so we'll start with them and the first is going to go to Andre Davis, who's a former NFL player. And then we'll also get a question from Sean Mwesigwa Williams. So let's get cameras to them. I see you already standing in the back of the microphone. Go ahead. Yes, Maraho. My name is Andre Davis. I'm a former NFL football player, played for nine years in the NFL. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm a friend of Rwanda through Africa New Life, uh, which is founded by Rwandan, run by Rwandans. I am a board member. We feed, clothe, and educate over 11,000 kids through educational sponsorships across Rwanda. Um, it is such a blessing to be able to give back to Rwanda because there is so much uh, to be done, so much to be seen. Uh, it is a blessing being able to be an advocate for Rwanda and to be able to tell all those I come into contact with about the great things being done. Uh, I am also the Director of Student Athlete Support and Community Engagement at Virginia Tech, where I'm trying to get education once again involved from here in America to Rwanda as well to build partnerships there. My question, thank you. 
My question is, uh, what does the process look like? One for the NFL, who also has games in Europe, in Mexico. How do we get them in Africa specifically? How do we get the NFL to Rwanda, as well as collegiate athletics? Uh, there are so many different invitationals and tournaments around the world that colleges will send their, their athletes to. How can we uh, present an invitational in Rwanda? Thank you, for, thank you for your question. Actually, as Masai was thinking, I was thinking about some of the NFL games which are played uh, in Europe uh, before the uh, NFL season starts. And I was wondering, thinking to myself, could one day Rwanda host just one uh, preseason game in Rwanda? Maybe that's something that we could eventually uh, think about. Um, you know, we are here to think big, right, Claire? So maybe this is something that we should eventually explore. I believe it's possible because um, the NBA has actually hosted three games in Africa, in South Africa, uh, three times. So I believe it's possible. All right. We can now take the next question. We can take someone from this side. Go ahead, go ahead, John. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I see a lot of hands on this side. Could go someone ahead. get a microphone to them, please? Go ahead. Uh, hello, my name is Sean Masigo, and uh, I had the honor for playing for the 16U national team as the captain. And. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, I had to say it was a huge honor, and um, it got a, really helped me like just learn about my culture and uh, uh, make a made a lot of new friends and lifelong relationships. And uh, and yeah, my question is, uh, other than just playing basketball, uh, how could the youth help uh, you know just bring up the sports industry other than just you know just playing basketball? Thank you. Uh, Sean, I actually remember you. I think you're one example of a diaspora that came back to play professionally uh, back home. So um, I believe many, many will be doing that as well. So in addition to playing, uh, as I said, there's so many opportunities in terms of skills. If you're good um, in photography, for example, if you're good, if you're a good DJ, if you're a good uh, statistics person, if you are... Um, you know, in construction, because we have arenas and basketball courts we are building. The basketballer, so that is the product. Basketball, playing basketball is the product, just like you have Coca-Cola. There's so much that happens. The people that are, you know, doing the ingredients, the people that are doing the labeling, the people that are doing packaging, the people that are marketing, transportation, exactly the same for basketball. So there's so many skills in the ecosystem. And basketball, I look at it like a product. But around that product, there's so many people and skills that can actually contribute to that final product. And so your skills, uh, if you're in, in digital, for example, in technology, there's so much you can do in the basketball ecosystem. So I think the call here is there is so much that any of you in your respective skills can consider being part of this, this ecosystem that is a sports economy. All right. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we won't be able to take any more questions, but please write your thoughts down, questions down, and we'll find a way to connect you to these people, or you can connect with them even at the end of the day. Thank but, you. But maybe one last thing I'll say, if I can, yes. is uh, we're starting the season four uh, on the on 9th of March. So while you're here, you can also follow the games on the continent. Uh, but you can also come, come to Kigali for the playoffs and finals. You can also go to Dakar. You can go to Johannesburg and Egypt, Cairo. We will be playing uh, basketball there. And I'll, f I'll leave you with a small video. Welcome. Thank you so much again to our brilliant panelists. And like you heard for yourselves, and another round of applause, please. Thank you. <laughs> As you heard for yourselves, Rwanda is open for business, so 
you want to invest in the Rwanda Basketball League, the sports industry, creative industry, it's open for business. You heard it yourselves. And I will also say, I remember when I was growing up, what parents expected us, you know, you either had to be an engineer, a doctor, and maybe nothing else, because that's where the money was. But now you can tell them, and you have, you have evidence. Show them something on YouTube. They will have access to this, and tell them that things have changed. You can make a million dollars off of one art piece, and so on. So the narrative has changed. If you're a young, creative person, Go for it. So thank you again. And Marcos de Francoise, Girango to Mazumania Twichai. The Cambasabe Mohaguruch, Arikon Hago to Sohokaha, Nomramba Varira. Hagunzi Konza Kubi Korane Zanga Doctor Sabe, Arikon Nido Aguruka. Turaza kwina nura ahari turakora kubirenge hanyuma tuze kwakira atom reka mbasabe muhaguruke twina nura murankurikira ngira ngo murabona uko ngana buri wese yambona ntagiye no kuri screen Rakoze, Rakoze, Rakoze. Abantu bagize n'umwanya wo kuramukanya nibyiza. Reka musabe Atom wegere hafi. Wegere kuri stage. Reka basabe musubire mu byicaro mu rakoze, mu rakoze ndabashimiye. Kumukoro mwiza mumaze gukora. Kadusubire mu byicaro. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully you've moved your body a little bit. Get that energy flowing. You can now take your seats again. We're gonna hear from our very own Rwandan musicians sharing with us some of their talent. Atom, please take the stage. We can all take our seats. ibihe byiza kuri mwese abakurikiye televiziyo Rwanda twizere ko aho muri hose mukomeje kwerwa neza atwize kandi ko mukomeje gukurikira Rwanda Day rikobera i Washington DC muri aka kanya rero twaba tugiye kugaruka n'ubundi kuri iki gikorwa ariko noneho turebera hamwe u Rwanda mu myaka 33 tunarebera hamwe umusaruro w'izi Rwanda Day zagiye ziba ubu ni kunshuro ya 11 nge ndi Gloria mukama abantu bose ndi nge nyine sabiti umezute Wiriwe neza cyangwa se arya ne wiriwe biraterwa naho turi abari Washington ubu ngo buharacyari kumanywa ariko natwe nkabifatanye ije nabo cyangwa se dusangiye turi mu mwuko umwe amasaha namwe amasaha namwe turi mu mwuko umwe nkuko bivuze turi kumwe kandi na Ladislas ngenda himana ukabura umuyobozi wa Rarga tugwaye ikaze urakoze cyane ndabashimiye wiriwe neza Petro tumeze neza urwanda n'urwanda urwanda n'urwanda hanyuma kandi turi buze kwifashisha ikorana buhanga turi kumwe na Olivier Nduhungire akaba ari ambassadeur mu Buholandi tuguhaye ikaze murakoze nakoze kuntumira Rwanda Day wakomeje kwikurikira aho mu Buholandi eh na ikuri ibiganiro byiza cyane uyu munsi Yego. 
hanyuma rero reka mwisimba he ikazi nari mbikomojeho turi kuvuga kuri Rwanda Day ariko turareba urwanda muri imyaka 33 cyane yuko ni na kimwe mu biganiro byagarutsweho wenda tuyubusa imwe mu biganiro byagarutsweho mu kanya gashize bagarutse ku kiganiro cyagarukaga ku Rwanda uko ruhagaze ku ruhando mpuza mahanga muri imyaka 33 ishize ariko kandi hanagarutswe ku kiganiro cyagarutse ku rwego rw'ubuzima mu Rwanda uko ruhagaze hanagarukwa ku kiganiro cyagarukaga ku iterambere ry'ubukungu binyuze muri sport ndetse n'imyidagaduro wenda reka mpere kuri la distance urwanda mu myaka 33 ni na kimwe mu biganiro byagarutsweho uyu munsi nidufata Rwanda Day tukayihuza n'uyu mwihariko w'u Rwanda mu myaka 33 kuri wowe wabiha iri yihesho cyangwa se umwihariko n'uwe umwihariko noko mu myaka 33 ushize no rugendo rwo kwiyubaka navuga yuko Rwanda rwavutse bushya ruravuka ruva mu gihe cyo kuba ngo ne gihugu kidafite kizere ne gihugu kitariho ne gihugu kidafite cyerekezo no no ruhinduka igihugu kiriho igihugu kizima igihugu gitekanye gifite kizere ariko kinafasha abandi kugira kizere cyo kuba ne gihugu cyavuye mu kubura umutekano kigeze igihe kibi igihugu noneho gifasha ibindi bihugu n'isi yose kubona umutekano ni igihugu cyabayeho kitagendwa gihinduka igihugu kigendwa noneho kikanafungura ambasade hirya no hino kwisi kandi nibindi bihugu bigafungura ambasade mu Rwanda no kuba ko cyabaye igihugu kigenda cyaguka kigaba amashami kandi kigendwa amanywa n'ijoro gifite umutekano kikanasagurira abandi yego Rwanda Day ibaye sabiti ibaye ku nshuro ya 11 tugarutse wenda ku ijambo rya ministre w'ubanyi ubu Rwanda ministre w'ubanyi n'amahanga ubutwererana ubutwererane Dr Vincent Biruta yavuze ati kuva Rwanda Day yaba zaba ku kwini ya 11 ubu ambassade igihugu gifite hirya no hino kwisi zimaze kugera kuri 47 umusaruro wa Rwanda Day birumvikana hari uh, urwanda nkuko ni, ni, ni izina ubwa ubwaryo rivuze uh, uh, rwakomeje kwanda kwaguka uh, ariko nanone rukaguka mu buryo bwiza abanyarwanda uh, bagenda isi bagenda baguka atari uko uh, bagiye 59 uh, irindwi uh, na kangahe kugeza ikenda kane bagenda bahunga ahubwo bagenda baguka bagura u Rwanda bagura ubushobozi ubumenyi uh, bagenda kuri cya kindi umunyarwanda uh, yavuze ati akanyoni katagurutse ni kamenya iyo bweze n'urwo Rwanda ariko nanone nabavuga butumwa bubutumwa bwiza uh, bw'u Rwanda rwaho bakomoka uh, bakaba na babandi wavuga ko batumye amahanga amenya iki gihugu akari kwa kakibenya mu buryo bwiza cyane cyane uko uh, amahanga hanini yamenye cyane Rwanda uh, ikenda kane uh, mm. ku nkuru mbi byumwe ariko kuri genocide akora abatutsi uh, uyu munsi rero mu buryo bwagutse eh, no kwaguka ku Rwanda mu buryo bwiza mu mu guhindura isura no kubona twavuye mu gitereko kimwe tujya mu kindi cyangwa se twavuye mu kiragano kimwe tujya turi mu kiragano gishya ni muri ubwo buryo navuga ko ni isura nziza reka wenda ukira aho isura nziza igihugu cyacu iye gusabiti wenda ukira aho ngaho uko moje kuguhinduka ku isura y'u Rwanda ku ruhando muza mahanga ambassadeur Olivier Nduhungire reka tugaruke kubijyanye n'umusaruro wa Rwanda Day ariko mu guhindura iminyo fide cyane cyane y'abanyarwanda bari hirya no hino kwise nibyo hari abanyarwanda koko bumvaga yuko bafwiriye kugira uruhare mu kuba ku Rwanda ariko hari nabandi bari bahari batarasobanukirwa uyu munsi bahindutse kubera ko Rwanda Day yabagezeho urwo rugendo rwo rwari ruteye rute murakoze Rwanda Day ni ikorwa cyagaciro nagize guhare dukomeye mu kukangura abanyarwanda bamwe na bamwe bari baragizwe ingwate namacakubiri mu miryango yabo muramva rakumva neza ambassade mwakomeza oui hanyuma 
habaye uh, impinduka igaragara mu banyarwanda benshi yego aha uh, bagiye baza muri Rwanda Day mataza kano kuri ambassade kuko bumvise ko nya kuba president wa republica uh, ahari cyangwa nabayobozi bahari hanyuma rero bagafata ikemezo cyo gutaha hanyuma rero umusaruro tukaba tubona ubungufu mm. uh, hari uh, nibijyanye ku shuri mari Rwanda no kohereza amafaranga mu Rwanda byagiye kwiyongera Yiko. kuva Rwanda de ya mbere yaba mu 2010 aha amafaranga yoherezwa mu Rwanda yikuje inshuro idubi ugeranyije n'uyu mwaka ico gengera ngo byari hanyuma mwanyumvise miliyoni 30 turakumva neza ambassade turaza no kugarukaho wavugaga kubijyanye n'impinduka zagiye ziba turaza kugarukaho ariko babambiye ko muri aka kanya twasubira gato i Washington DC reka twerekezeyo turaza kugaruka Ese warubise chiko ni we mute 
Hanyuma se je kwa magara coach wanje icyo gere mu nkuba cyane muraho cyane reka ngushikirize iri kondera na nawe ugire ikintu bigenza my coach Yes. Umuhungu wanje ampaye akanya gatoreka ndabasuze nanjye. Ese kucitse ngwino. Ndabareba ngumva ndabakunza ariko nawe bindirimbo ni baririmbire. Ariko nje kwaririmbira zimwe musanzwe mumenyereye ni mufasha mukoma mashima ke Rwanda itajengwa na na ni vijana Ako mwahagurutse mo kagirimo muhagurutse ho gaki o Rwanda itajengwa na na ni vijana Wa mama watajengwa na nani vijana Ambasada tajengwa na nani vijana O sisi wenyewe Na sisi wenyewe Eh kuva majwi Na sisi wenyewe Jenga jenga taifa lako Jenga jenga taifa lako Mukomeze yo morale iraryoshye cyane murakoze Niba kitoko aji hari hafi simbizi na wakore mu nganzo Randa ye Bo je nabo nje kuririmba barambiye ngo mugomba kwerekana ibyishimo nkabona kuririmba tujye kurushanwa Rwanda oye murikiriza oye oye ibice ni bitatu abari wa bambere nibo ndi buririmbire Turahera hari Rwanda ye Okay bana nabo barimo Wala na kwa wali mwani hali agusi. Rwanda ye! Ya, makumi ya nagata anu, kujirano. Tuko njiri. Rwanda ye! Mirongi tanu, leka tukumbe hanu. Rwanda ye! Na hafga kabili ndi uwa hewanu. Rwanda ye! So muzamure na angu mjeza hariya. Tukwa ji. Rwanda ye. Harakari ni mbukuru kundu.
Ya dua garici. Ara kose chane kitoko, amashi menshi kuri kitoko. Nabandi bahanzi masamba ruti ndetse na atom. Ah deka dusubire mu byicaro ariko mbafiti inkuru. And our friends of Rwanda, wherever you came from, where are you? Thank you, thank you. Friends of Rwanda. Yay! <laughs> Australia, Australia! <laughs> South Sudan, where are you? There you are. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Truly, you all have come from all over the world, and we're so excited to have you with us today. Murakoze-chan. Harabati mvise? Abona abahe? Where are the Boston people? Okay. Let's hear Washington, D.C. people. Who else? Oh, that's your main people. Main, yeah. <laughs> Maine, yes. Where are the people who are coming from Maine? People from Missouri. Dusubire mu byicaro nababwiye ko mu mwanya tuza kwakira umushitsi mukuru muri iki gitaramo kitagira uko gisa abo mbona mu gihagaze please reka mbasabe mujye mu myanya mwicare mukanya tugiye kunezerwa hano murakoze murakoze reka tubikore twihuse turaza kugira umwanya wo kuramukanya reka nsabe ko abantu hirya no hino dusubira mu byicaro byacu Murakoze 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 cyane ndacyabona abantu bahagaze byaba byiza abantu basubiye mu byicaro tukaza kwereka umushitsi wacu mukuru uko tunezerewe uyu munsi nitwe twawusabye abantu bo muri America na Canada twarawisabiye rero reka Tumukuri rubgati ko ya 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 duha ichu muti mawa chui fuge mumga ka mosha wui humbi viri makumi ya viri nakani begu wuna ni begu wuna ni abanurgo se mufashe mufashe amajugu nomba sure mo biyecharo. Thank you so much. Everyone continue to take your seats. And just a quick plug. As I said earlier, we have lots and lots in store for you and a lot of entertainment. So tonight you can expect obviously dinner and networking and so on. But you'll also get some performances from our very own. We have Bruce Melody. We have the band. We have Teta Diana. DJ Toxic, all of those people, you'll be able to hear from them tonight. So stay excited. No, Kuri, we must say, we will be your Rwanda. Rakoze, Rakoze. Ava, no, Mukome, Ze, Mujye, Mnyanya, Tukui, Huse. Kandi dutrungu zuburju mngete.
Yego wayizamura tuzarwubaka Nubwo tutarwubaka twicaye ariko tube tubitekereza Tube tubitekereza buri wese umushinga we awushyire mu mutima Arebe nuko azawushyira mu bikorwa
Tuje agaze. Tuje agaze, tuje agaze. Mureke turirimbe indirimbo y'igihugu. Tuje agaze indirimbo y'igihugu, murakoze cyane. Murakoze cyane murakoze cyane dushobora kwicara Murakoze nyakubaha Perezida wa Repubulika y'u Rwanda na madame banyacyubahiro bayobozi mu nzego nkuru z'igihugu cyacu turabashimiye kandi tubahaye ikaze muri iki cyumba muri Rwanda de yuyu munsi nitwa Felix Masengesho ndi ntore isonga ntewe ishema no kuba umusangiza wa magambo muri iki gitaramo nyako wa president wa republika y'u Rwanda dukunda atuyoboyemo bene imana bene u Rwanda Washington DC twasabye nyako wa president wa republika ko yazduhubunane aka duha Rwanda day yabidukoreye mumfashe tumushimye <laughs> nyako wa president wa republika imyaka 30 irashize mutubohoye mukaduha Rwanda igihugu kiza imyaka 30 kandi irashize nyako wa president wa republika muhagaritse genocide yakore wa batutsi ibi bibagira intwari mu mitima yacu mwandikishije wino ya zahabu ubutwari buduhoramo kandi duhora tubizirikana iteka turabashimiranya kuba president wacu igihe abantu benshi babisikana baza muri iki gihugu mwafashe icyemezo kidukiza mujya kudutabara amacuma cyanyi tuzahora tubizirikana nyakuba president wacu nta numwe twabona usa namwe amagambo yo kubasingiza nti tubona ikinyarwanda tuyavugamo mu ijambo rimwe mwarakoze Thank you. And my name is Francoise Niyijena, a young Rwandan currently living in New York City. I am so honored today to be the other MC. Your Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda and the First Lady of Rwanda, Jeanette Kagame, it is truly an honor to have you here with us today. Gathered here, for Rwanda Day 2024, uh, over 6,000 people, see over 6,000 Rwandans in this room, and friends of Rwanda, some are here, and others in another room, Woodrow Wilson, celebrating this day. In addition, we have millions who are joining us live on TV and the radios. People have traveled far and wide from all over the world to hear from you, 
to celebrate the achievements of Rwanda, to discuss the future of Rwanda and our role as young Rwandans, our role as Rwandans living abroad in moving this needle forward. Thank you for being here with us. Your Excellency, as you know, it's always a powerful and fun time when Rwandans are gathered. And these two days have been nothing short of that. We've heard from many distinguished speakers on the various entrepreneurial opportunities in the country. The remarkable milestones Rwanda has achieved in the last 30 years since the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. We've truly come from far and broken many ceilings thanks to your leadership. In the words of Honorable Abdallah Utumatkuishima, we've truly made a name for ourselves and we're proud of that. Today, while many in this room may not live in Rwanda, we walk shoulders high, proud to be Rwandans, proud to tell people that we're Rwandans, and proud to, talk, to tell the world about our achievements and that many never thought possible. We also heard about the incredible milestones that have been made in the healthcare sector and how the sports industry, sports and entertainment industry are playing a crucial role in Rwanda's economic development. We actually heard a funny and great story about you at a basketball game, putting your head down and thinking so hard about how much it costs to build an arena in Kigali. And guess what? The arena is there now today. So thank you for scratching your head multiple times. We see the results. <laughs> All these achievements are possible thanks to your visionary leadership that has created a country and a home where we know there are no limits. The young people in this room would say the bar is high and the world just ain't ready. So on behalf of the thousands of Rwandans gathered in this room and friends of Rwanda, millions online, I want to say thank you and we can't wait to hear from you today. I'll start by welcoming the U.S. Rwanda Community Abroad President for remarks, and then we'll go from there. So, Yehoyada Mbanguchira, welcome to the stage for your remarks. Good afternoon. Are you still okay? Yes. Uh, you should have corrected me and said, we are doing great. That's right. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, First Lady, Honorable Ambassadors, Honorable Ministers, it is a privilege for me to stand here and welcome you to this session. I welcomed you earlier and I told you I'll be back to do this special deed here. Welcome, welcome to this wonderful Rwanda Day. You came from far and near, and we here in the Inharega Tandatu, as we call it, the Rwandans in the United States of America, who are comprised of 29 association, associations, were able to mobilize hundreds and thousands of you here now and those that are watching online, and we welcome you to this opportunity to see and here, Rwanda at 30 and its accomplishments and the gains. And Your Excellency, much was said today. And we are expecting to hear even more inspirational words from you. But one thing that we have realized that Rwanda at 30, Rwandans, young and old, chose and decided to band together to build a nation. And today, the many Rwandans in the United States have, and I urge them again, 
that let us continue to band together to build the Rwanda we choose by beginning with the communities where we live because it matters and the homeland is looking at us to do exactly that. I'm proud to say for this period I've been here as the leader of this Rwandan diaspora around here in the United States, we are mobilized, we are grateful, and we have chosen and will continue to choose. And soon and very soon, we spoke about uh, last evening with a team of Rwandans who are leading out. After they've done this mobilization, they have decided to go into their communities and mobilize so that young people who are able to vote later this year, they too can choose to re-elect His Excellency when that time comes. This excitement better turn into votes because you are about to choose a Rwanda you want, a Rwanda you choose, will be, be dependent on you and let's get our young people to indeed preserve their gains because you are Rwandan. God bless you and we welcome you here this evening. Thank you. President of the Republic, we are very proud of you. 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 Pastor Rick Warren, to get to be a leader, we need a leader who is going to be a leader. Maraho, maraho, everyone. I'm Pastor Rick Warren, author of The Purpose Driven Life and uh, Pastor Saddleback Church. I've had over 3,500 members of our church serving in Rwanda over the past 20-something years. I've been intimately acquainted with Rwanda, as I said, for about two decades. I've been in Rwanda dozens and dozens of times just a couple months ago and count literally thousands of friends in Rwanda. I'm also a founding member of President Kagame's Presidential Advisory Committee. Uh, today I want to speak briefly about a topic very close to my heart, encouraging young Rwandans and Rwandan expatriates living here in America to support your beloved country. First, I want to congratulate you on being here today because it says that you have a love for your home country. That is a good thing because you have every right to be proud of your country. You know, in the past 30 years, Rwanda has been the greatest success story of any nation in the 21st century. No other nation has come so far so fast. I've been privileged to witness that transformation of a society coming out of uh, the genocide. I've been witness to a small part of the success uh, that have happened in your country. Now, you may be wondering how you can support the continued success and growth of Rwanda while living outside the country. So it's crucial for you to recognize that no matter where you live in the world, you still have the power to contribute positively to your homeland. Let me just quickly give you four very practical ways. Number one, education and sharing your skills. First thing that I urge you to do is take advantage of all the educational opportunities that are available here to you in America. Because education is a powerful tool that can be used to bring about positive change. Acquiring knowledge and skills in all kinds of various fields, which you can then transfer this knowledge and skill base back to Rwanda. But also, while you're here, I want you to consider engaging in a mentorship program with the next generation in Rwanda right now. You can do this through online teaching. You can do it through organizing workshops where you can share your expertise with young Rwandans who are living in the nation right now. Education is the key to unlocking a brighter future for your nation. Second, entrepreneurship and investment. Another way you can support Rwanda from afar is by fostering uh, entrepreneurship and investments in your home country. 
Now, as a Rwandan expatriate living outside of the country, you are uniquely positioned to connect both Rwandans and Americans in business ventures together. And by getting this partnership of investment in Rwanda's growing economy and supporting local entrepreneurships there, you help create jobs, you stimulate the economy and growth, and you transform individual lives. So I want to encourage you to consider establishing some partnerships or encouraging investments or passing on key contacts in key sectors such as tourism and technology and agriculture and health that can be used uh, in your home nation. Third, let me just mention this, social initiatives and philanthropy. Uh, please don't forget the importance of giving back to your nation and your communities in Rwanda. Through social initiatives and through philanthropic efforts, you can directly impact the lives of people who are still in need. You can support local charities from afar. You can sponsor educational programs from afar. You can contribute to healthcare and infrastructure development. You see, by leveraging your resources and networks here, you can make a meaningful and lasting difference in the lives of people, fellow Rwandans living in the nation right now. Finally, I hope you will consider what I call cultural exchanges or diaspora engagement. What I mean by that is this, your cultural heritage is a vital part of who you are as Rwandans. You may have been, like many Rwandans, born outside of the nation. But by promoting cultural exchanges and fostering uh, engagement with Rwandans around the world, you can strengthen the ties between your homeland and, and the Rwandan community that lives all around the world outside of Rwanda. You can organize cultural events like this, Rwanda Day, at a local level. You can organize art exhibitions of Rwanda. You can organize festivals that showcase your rich heritage. What I'm saying is that through these activities, you can preserve your traditions, your language, your identity, also at the same time, while you're exchanging ideas, promoting understanding, increasing appreciation uh, among different uh, communities. What I'm saying is this, you have the power to contribute to the growth and the development of your country, even when you're not living in your country. By embracing these things, education, entrepreneurship, philanthropy, uh, cultural preservation, uh, and advocacy for your nation, you can support Rwanda and you can help shape its future. So I wanna urge you, uh, Rwandans, young Rwandans particularly, unite your efforts and work together toward a brighter, more prosperous Rwanda for generations to come. Now, you may be saying, Rick, why are you saying this? Why is this so important? Well, there are two big reasons. Number one, 2024 is symbolically a year of generational change because the 30th commemoration of the genocide uh, and because of the elections in July, which people will be elected at all levels of government, you see, three quarters of Rwandans are under the age of 30. And so what I'm saying to those of you under 30, you need to step up to leadership. We need you. I believe in you. President Kagame believes in you. The leadership of Rwanda believes in you. And we need you to step up. It's time for you to start serving in some way. Second, I want to just say this personally. Rwanda is worth fighting for. You know, you're always going to have to fight for it because of Rwanda's size, because of Rwanda's history, and because of Rwanda's in, the, the inequities that are in the world. You're always going to have to have that fighting spirit, the spirit to fight for what is right, for justice, for freedom, for all of the things that we know are right and good. You know, my dear friend, President Paul Kagame has modeled this spirit for 30 years. And I want you to catch his spirit, to realize that your nation is precious, it's valuable, and it's worth fighting for to protect it from those who would destroy it and critics who would demean it. 
You need to step up and show your love for your nation. So thanks for listening to me. I want you to know I love you all. I love Rwanda. And may God bless all of you. Thank you so much to our dear friend, Pastor Rick Warren. We will keep our eyes on the screen as we're going to hear from another friend of Rwanda. We're going to hear from Senator Jim Inhofe, who also was unable to be here with us, but is clearly here with us. So stay tuned. Well, you know, I really regret that I'm not there with you for a trip was with Paul Gugami and, and the whole family. But I will say this in a way I am uh, I am there with you because when you walk into our house in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the first thing you see are the Rwanda gorillas. And these my wife has these prominently displayed right in the front door when you first come in. So this is the first thing you see. Well, I'm I'm probably the right one to be talking about Paul Kagame and, and about Rwanda. It's been a real love affair. We've actually been together for uh, some 14 formal trips uh, to uh, Rwanda. They date back all the way to our first trip, which was October 29th of the year 2000. I'd been trying to get them all day long and wanted to meet this guy. I've heard all about him. And, uh, and I kept trying and kept trying. I guess I finally wore him out because it wasn't until 2 o'clock in the morning that he was available. We had a meeting, and that was our meeting number one. All the trips that we made there since the turn, the turn of the century have been glorious and joyful trips. And, uh, and I think that Mauro said it right the other day when he talked about what was different about our relationship, or specifically about my re relationship with Paul Kagame, is that we are together, we are close friends, and we have a trust, we have a trust. You can't pray with someone uh, over a period of years, not totally trust each other. There hasn't been one meeting that we had that we didn't start praying with each other for our countries. And, and, and so it's only natural that that's when they have, so they have the close friendship. Well, as Morrow would, would uh, tell you, because he's heard it so many times, that our relationship is unique because we work together, pray together, fellowship together, and talk about the precepts of Jesus together. And we love Rwanda and will always love Rwanda. Thank you so much again to our dear friend of Rwanda. And as you all know, Rwandans do not gather and not dance. We're dancers and we love it. So next I will welcome the young, Diaspora members who are going to share with us a Kinyaranda dance that they've put together. Muraho neza tubafitiye inkuru nziza twebwe bana banyu abari hano nabari hirwe no hino kwisi tubijeje gukunda urwanda rwatubyaye gukunda umuco n'urimi rwacu kuko umuco dusangiye uraturanga urimi rwacu ukaduhuze bikawusinge umwe bw'abanyarwanda bose murakoze twese hamwe ndu Yeah. 
Thank you, thank you so much to our talented young diaspora dancers. Brilliant job. Another round of applause for them, please. Thank you, thank you. All right. We're nearing that moment that I know we've all been waiting for. And so I'm going to invite I'm going to invite the ambassador of Rwanda to the US. Ambassador Matilde Mukan Havana, who will share her remarks and invite our guest of honor. Thank you so much, His Excellency Mr. President Kagame, Her Excellency First Lady. As you can see, we send the children to give you flowers for everyone in the room. We are, let me tell you, we have been doing a countdown for four years. This is the moment. So for me, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to take much time, but what I have to tell you is that all these people have defied the rain, they have defied the snow, they have walked, they have flown, they have driven, but us stand for tall. You have given us back our dignity as a people. And when I look at the people coming from Canada, from the United States, all the states of the United States, coming from Africa, coming from Europe, in the month of February, to come here in unprecedented numbers, this is not a common occurrence anywhere. So it shows exactly the type of leadership you've brought to all of us <laughs> where we have put up. You have made us brought out stronger and better versions of ourselves as people. And for that, we will always be thankful for what you have done for our country. You have given us hope. You have given us dignity. You have given us peace. And I don't think that any time in history, uh, you know, I've lived a long time. Maybe I'm among the oldest in this room. <laughs> But I can tell you that I have never seen, and I studied the history, I have never seen anyone as consequential as the president of Rwanda and his leadership. So I have to say, uh, so for me, it's a, it's a big honor and privilege to be among families and friends, because the friends have been consistent supporters as we went through leadership, and I want to thank our colleagues in Canada who came in large numbers to be with us here. I thank all our leadership who came from the country. So let me tell you, I can talk wherever, you know, until we wake up, but really the moment we have all been waiting for, everybody who came here for these two days, they came to listen to President Kagame. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, where do I start from? So to our ambassador, with all the kind words and everything, let me say, uh, maybe Rwanda got the leadership Rwanda deserved. And I'm saying this to remind all of us 
that um, nothing works just because of one person or one leader, but uh, things work because of the collective effort. So for Rwanda to deserve, uh, as I said, the leadership uh, they got, it's indeed because Rwanda uh, and Rwandans together have done things uh, that um, therefore they deserve to be moving in the right direction. So thank you. Now, I'm here, I've been here for the last couple of days um, for a number of reasons. The first was the invitation I received to come and uh, join and be part of prayer breakfast. And I thank uh, Grace, whom I see here in front of me in this room. Thank you for doing that. So I came. We prayed. We had breakfast. Everything went according to plan. I'm grateful. But coming here for prayer breakfast gave me a number of opportunities. One was to meet uh, many other people here in the United States. Uh, public and private people who serve in those capacities. I also met, well, this time I'm meeting Rwandans from across the world, I should say. Meeting Rwandans in this sense, Rwanda Day is not just another addition to the program I had. It's a very important part of uh, why I had to come here even uh, to answer the invitation I received for prayer breakfast. Because I normally, even for just Rwanda Day on its own, I have traveled places to meet and address a gathering like this. So all those were very important uh, tasks for me to carry out while I was here. The other part is um, equally important. I want to take this moment to thank, let me start with Rwandans who have come from all over the world and are here with us and we are going to have a, a good conversation. But I want to thank the friends of Rwanda who have not, uh, who are no longer just friends. They have become uh, Rwandans, they have become uh, family, if I will say. <laughs> there are those who uh, have just spoken to us. 
Senator Inhofe, Pastor Rick, and there are many others uh, sitting here in this audience that I have seen and can see now and others. Um, they've become, for the last 30 years, some of them, in actual fact, part of who we have become and who we are. So I want you to thank you. I won't take the risk of uh, naming them. I don't want to leave anyone out of the list that I would wish to spare out. They are here. Anyway, that's the most important thing, and I can see them, and I can thank them when they are here. So there are things that uh, happened during this time I've been here. There are things that didn't happen. You know, some people sometimes want to highlight what didn't happen. But I want to highlight what happened that was very important for me and for Rwanda. Our journey has been uh, quite long and uh, trying, uh, difficult, but that's the beauty of it, uh, that we are where we are through those, those difficulties we have endured, we have survived, we want to do just as much to be better human beings, to be where we want to be. Some people in other parts of the world have taken for granted we will be there, no matter what. <clears throat> this is what we said from the beginning. Thirty years ago, now we're covering thirty years since uh, the worst tragedy in our country. but we believed. We wanted to live our lives, even so many lost theirs. And we promised ourselves. You know, uh, there is this, I think people say, that uh, lightning does not strike twice in the same place. Doesn't strike the same place twice. Maybe. But for me, I want to be on the safe side. I would rather make sure and prepare for a situation where Rwanda that was struck once badly in 94 
will not be struck again. I want us Rwandans not to take chances. We just have to ensure that we are not going to be struck again. And um, that is possible. We just have to prepare our defenses, build our capacity. You know, with the, with the lightning, which I was giving a, uh, the example of, is uh, something, maybe in some languages they call it something else, or even in the same language, English, but I know it as a lightning conductor. You put it on a house, and when uh, the lightning strikes, everything goes down to the earth and leaves the building uh, and the people and things intact in the house if it was a house. So we have to make sure that we put in place this uh, protective mechanism. And that's going to be by every one of us being prepared and working together to ensure that uh, that does not happen again. Earlier, the young lady mentioned something, and I quickly, to my mind, I knew where the story came from. Uh, somebody must have uh, let out our conversation, which was a bit... Uh, private, and I know it must have come from Maasai, who I'm seeing in the crowd. Uh, what he didn't tell you was that, uh, apart from scratching my head, I was busy turning my pockets and <laughs> wondering where the money is going to come from. Uh, but nonetheless, I... I even then, I was convinced all that is possible. It is possible, it's going to be possible in many other cases because of uh, what I said earlier just working hard, preparing ourselves, learning lessons from our past and history, building on that, moving ahead into our future, which must be better than our past. You know, human beings are capable of many things, uh, some of them as bad as what happened 30 years ago in our country. But human beings also have the capacity to do good things, like Rwandans have repaired what was destroyed, including our lives, and we are much better now than we were 30 years ago. We just have to keep going. 
I was going to say, don't relax, but I want you to relax. <laughs> Only that you remember that uh, while you relax, you also, parallel to that, you need to be doing the right things, the right way, and the right speed. All right? Um, I've also heard people say, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go and reach far, you have to go together. You know, I want us to go together, but I want us to go fast and reach far, both of them. I don't think there is any contradiction. You can go far and fast at the same time. That's what our situation compels us to do. And we must, must think like that. We must be able to do things and move fast but we want to go far at the same time. And we really have ourselves either to blame or, or to thank for succeeding. Nobody else. Don't, don't blame. If Rwanda has failed, don't start looking for excuses and say, you know, somebody somewhere, and then you start talking about the colonial times, you start talking about, no, no, no. Those are over, behind us. So, so don't, don't, uh, let, let's not use an excuse. Uh, uh, we, we, we must, uh, though of course in, uh, in our region and we see on our continent, we still have a lot of problems to overcome, but they can be overcome. There's no question about it. Um, and we need to keep uh, trying to work together. Best what we are doing on facts, on truth, on evidence. And measure what we are doing, where we have come from, and where we have reached. And then you try to investigate to find what is it that uh, delayed us, what is it that failed us, and, and you fix it, and we have to fix that. We are capable um, and please, as Rwandans, we can't afford to waste the lessons learned from our tragedy. There are so many lessons, including that sometimes in time of need, you are on your own. So you prepare for when that time comes. If you were to be left on your own, you can still do something and survive and live and make progress. But that does not preclude working together with others and learning from them and benefit from what they offer. So these are things we saw for one who came from uh, 
different places. And uh, friends of Rwanda, whom I mentioned too. The reasons for Rwanda Day um, to start with is to make sure that every Rwandan who is outside of Rwanda is connected with his or her home wherever they are. You can leave Rwanda and go wherever you want to go, but Rwanda should not leave you. It stays with you. So maybe if you stayed with it in some form, it's good for all of us. It's good for Rwanda, it's good for you. And it is doable. That's why uh, whenever I have an opportunity, we have this Rwanda Day. We have had so many here in the United States. We have had uh, more than a dozen of them. We have had them in Canada, in Europe, in, in Africa itself, in Asia, and, but more here in the United States. And uh, we will have more. Rwanda. So we are here now 30 years after the tragedy. And I know since 94. Many of you are about that age, 30 years, plus, minus, but around that. I want to ensure that we understand that our future, your future, is in your hands. The young people of our country want to be able to rely on you, to believe in you, To get a sense that you've been brought up in a manner that is going to be meaningful and uh, to put Rwanda in a place where it deserves to be. It's upon you. Those are choices that you have to make. And I don't see why you wouldn't make those good choices that were enabled it to happen as we want it. So those in the business, in the politics, in the philanthropy, in the faith organizations and different things, we welcome you, we thank you for many things you're already doing, but uh, we have to be aware there is more to come. 
is more expected from all of us. Um, so that's the pleasure of being here and thanking you for what you're already doing and urging you to do more. Asking you to do more isn't like uh, making you feel that what you're doing is a thankless job, but just the reality of uh, our situation and what is expected of us. So, and I said, uh, where do I start from? I'm now struggling to find a way of ending this one. <laughs> but I want to once again thank you. I think we have uh, another part where we are going to have a conversation. And uh, I hope we all enjoy that part as well. God bless you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. You've seen the incredible eagerness and excitement in this room to hear from you. So I hope you're ready for four years full of questions because we have plenty. We'll start our Q&A in this room. And as I mentioned earlier, we have people in this room. We also have people in the Woodrow Wilson room. And so I'm going to start with two people here. We had questions that were sent to us, so we'll start with those. Irakoze Zilfa and Vutera Michael, you're going to go first, and you're both in this room. So let's see you both. Make sure you go quick so that we have plenty of time for other people to ask four years of questions. Um, thank you, Your Excellency. My name is Zelfa Irokoze. I am a PhD candidate at the Pennsylvania State, uh, Pennsylvania State University, I'm doing a dual title in food science and international agriculture and development. Uh, mine won't be a question, but rather a thank you note. Um, I want to thank you for the excellent leadership system that you've put in place, a system that um, empowers the youth, a system that empowers a girl child. I benefited from the system when I was 18 years old, straight out of high school. You can hear me. I'm sorry. Um, thank you. Um, I was saying that I benefited from the system, the leadership. Thank you. Can you hear me better? I was saying that I benefited from this leadership system that you've put in place. When I was 18 years old, I was a young graduate from high school with a dream to go abroad and help in the development of my country. I had the grades, I had the passion, and I had the dream, but I didn't have the economic funds to be able to do so. But thanks to the system you've put in place, I was granted um, a scholarship that was a collaboration. That was a collaboration of the Ministry of Agriculture and the Howard Buffett Foundation. Uh, me and other, so many of my colleagues, do, thanks to that scholarship, I was able to do my undergrad at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln in Agriculture. And seven years later, I'm happy to report that I'm pursuing a PhD and a prospective a doctor in the next year.
And as you always remind us to whom much is given, much is expected. And uh, we want, I wanted you to know that the students that you've sent here to do the education and learn were, have committed to empowering the next generation of scientific researchers. We are committed to being the representative and being the symbol of the country's dream and vision, telling the stories of Rwanda, the vision of Rwanda, a vision spoken truly from a Rwandan child and not a vision that's spoken from other people, telling our stories correctly. And to conclude, as you had just mentioned and empowered us to do at the Umushi 2024, you said fight for your dreams. We hear you, we see you, we are ready and we're committed to put all our energy, all the skills that we've been empowered to do into the development of our country, whether that's directly collaborating with different researchers in Rwanda, as I'm currently working on into a project of in, in, in reducing aflatoxin in maize, or potentially head spearing these different agriculture projects in the future. Thank you very much. Let's get the second question. The second question was coming from Utera Michael. Uh, right. uh, thank you very much. My name is Michael Butera Mugasa, and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity, and thank you very much, uh, President. I stand here not just presenting myself, not just on my behalf, but on behalf of very many students who have come across uh, the United States uh, from Canada, and we're just here to say three things to you, Mr. President. We came to assure you that we see, listen, and understand what you've been doing and what you continue to do. Dear President, as a young person, I can't state in full measure what you've been able to do in terms of mental framework change. Rwandans have always been yearning a new framework of thinking that they hold on so strongly that changed so much. Dear President, get it from us, I mean the youth in the room, that you've given us and continue to offer us a free yet powerful class of life. I call this class a master class. It's free. You just tune in YouTube, he's speaking, and we don't watch just words. We watch concept, philosophies, value system that's so grounded enough to keep us going, to keep us uh, uh, unique and strong. Dear President, as I conclude, I want to assure you that it's no longer about you. And in any way, it's never been you. The amount of time you mentioned people, my people, people, it just speaks all. It's a part of team, it's a system that works so hard to make sure that Rwandans, especially young Rwandans have a systematic system of believing that things are so different and they're going to be different. Dear President, you've cultivated a mindset in us, a mindset of independence, self-sufficiency, and thinking ourselves as equals, even talented, and just like everyone else in the world. We, you know, we used to believe that you know, there's a specific class of people who believes in certain one who do things differently. You've defied that, if anything, the distance between I and anyone that I always looked up as things were impossible, it has been reduced to almost, you know, everything is possible. I myself, I was born in Tanzania, went to Rwanda when I was very young, got my first scholarship when I was in primary, second scholarship in high school, second scholarship in university, and an awful scholarship in Harvard. All this has been just that... The dear president, it has been, it's just an evenly, equally disputed opportunity. It's a country where you can come from anywhere, work hard, work up your way, and make yourself proud and everyone that is dependent on you. That's the system that works. Mr. President, as I conclude, I have learned so much from you, but more specifically, it's your consistency 
and the art of perfection. You don't want to go anything below than what should and what ought to be the right way to do. It's called legacy. Before I pass the mic, before I pass the mic to another person, I wish to say one thing. That President, this is what we deserved, as you said. It's what we deserved. It was about right time, and especially you to come and show us what we're capable, inherently in us. It's not something external, not at all. President, as youth, and I hope I captured your thoughts and I represented you very well, but personally, this is coming from my heart. I was reading from my phone, but I, I had hard time to craft what I should tell Mr. President. I've been extremely inspired throughout. So as I walk back to my seat, I want to tell you, President, that I assure you and promise you that as youth, we understand the assignment. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. I will give your excellency a moment to respond and then we'll have questions from the Woodrow Wilson room. My, that is very true. My, no questions were my, asked. My response for that is a thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we do welcome questions and remarks, suggestions, but please make it quick, get to the point so that other people can have a chance to ask their questions as well. Yes, no speeches, <laughs> but we appreciate you. Um, so I'm going to take questions from the Woodrow Wilson room. Hold on, we'll get, we'll get to you, we'll get to you. Let's get some questions from the Woodrow Wilson room and we'll come back to this room. And please remember to make it quick. Hello? Uh, Your Excellency Murakoze Chane, Nitwa Nio Mugabo. Muri Washington, Havu Zichumba Chatwa Chir, Havu Zichumba Tua Kirgom. Virele Kanubuzu Tua Fitia, Your Excellency, Turishi Nye Chane, Turi Muchindi Chumba, Tua Kuri Chirana Kandi. Turishimye pe cyane kubakira. Ah, uh, your excellency najya ngo mbashimire ko kutubonera umwanya aho dutuye, aho tugenda na nta gihe abantu batatubaza ngo iwanyu ni he tukabivuga twishimye cyane twacu ni mu Rwanda. Mwaduhaye izina ryiza izina ubunyarwanda ni izina ridusiteri shema turabyishimira cyane. Mu Kinyarwanda wa ngo urugo rw’umwana rugususurutse utaruraemo u Rwanda tururebera kure imitima ya kigasusuruka kandi tutaraye mu Rwanda Yo Excellency najya ngo gusamba ndabizi ko hari igitekerezo cyo kuzana Rwanda ya hano muri Amerika turifuza ko cyakwihutishwa Ichindi gitekerezo Ah uh, your excellency twohereza umusanzu wacu tugafasha ababyeyi n'abavandimwe twasize mu gihugu kandi turishimira cyane ko uh, ejo bashize batubwiye imibare kandi biradutera ishema uh, turashaka ko mwadufasha hakazashyirwaho ahantu ho koherereza imisanzu yacu bidaciye muri platforme z'abanyamahanga ari amafizi baducha ni menshi nabaya ducha bakaya ducha abanyarwanda ariko yose akageri wacu murakoze cyane yo excellence thank you let's get one more question suggestion from the Woodrow Wilson room as well and please make it quick get to the point Murakoze nitwa Adeline Murerongondo rugandura 
wa Rugandwa na Nakabony, engineer in biotechnology, specialized in vaccines. I'm Rwandan by blood, um, Tanzanian by birth, and American Uhaha, to make sure we have bread on the table. Um, Your Excellency Paul Kagame, thank you for making our Rwandan a beautiful home for everywhere, for everyone everywhere, and dignity, where the dignity and peace belongs. I'm proud Kuandu Munyarwanda. Mabibina Mobwana, Asante. What a great day to be a part of Rwandan community. It feels like a home. It's a great opportunity to be a part of this event where I can see my sisters, my brothers, my parents in one setting. Murakoze chane, nyakubahwa, guhora mutuzirikana, mukatu. 15th mu Rwanda please muzareka tumushyigikire akomeza tuyobore neza murakoze Your excellency would you like to respond to that Okay Please make sure you ask questions and get to the point. I will take a question from right here in front. I see two ladies right there in the back. Make that quick, please. Let's get a mic right here and one back there. Please make it quick. As you can see, there's lots of hands in here and hands I don't see in the other room, so. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, my name is Lawrence Norris. I'm here in the United States, and I'm with a project called the African Synchrotron Light Source. And I'm here with my good friend, Romain Marinzi, who you uh, certainly know. My question is, what percentage of GDP does the government of Rwanda spend on science and technology, and what is the right balance between your domestic government expenditure and foreign assistance for science and technology? Thank you so much, and thank you for getting right to the point. Okay, let's get a question from the two ladies back there. Um, um, hello? Sorry. Turi impanga butubabarire n'icyo tuba twasabye ngo tungo tuvugire cyarimo. Murakoze president de Kambanze mahere kuyuri 2013 muri Toronto mwara dusiye muri Canada. Sinzi uko mutwibuka ariko twari impanga two haragurutse turabyina 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 kugeza mu duhaye jambo. Cyo giye muri duhaye naravuze ni mutubabaye to very persistent ariko haturi kuri mission. Your mission is to ikibanza mu muri kiduhe twubake twubakira abaturage twubaka amashuri twubaka amazu muri 2013 cyo gihe mwaravuze ngo ariko biroroshye ngo vugana hano na RDB bazakibaho cyo kibanza mwara kiduhaye ke kibanza mwa kiduhaye bugesera duhamagara mama ngo turagowe ngo busa abantu hadakira imihanda hatagira amazi na kitse zagira gute kandi twari kumwe nabazungu benshi dukorana muri Canada baravuga ngo mama ravuga ngo ko mudasenga musenga imana ifite plan tugiye twumva ngo niho ya report zizaza nibindi byose tutimabira shimwe so you can get a quick point since we talked in 2013 yena buto we have raised over a million dollar canadian it's quite a who but say haruzuye haramazu abaturage amashuri yabana turabagaburira naba ministre baza kudusura duherukanye na ministre asumuta kiriyo aravuga ngo iyi modo mufite niyo yigihugu tukeneye kugenderaho so then ndajya ngo mbashimire mwaduhaye kibanza kandi gena butoyi ni philanthropy only to the volunteers gendo mwari mu impumyi nkora braille a producer braille for living with the government of canada uyakora na immigration canada ariko kuberako twavuze ngo tuzahahe neza ariko dufashe 
abi wacu tuje tuve muri low income kuri middle class dore mr president kagame nukuri na print in the 2050 vision life ite hano ndai soma every word and that's what i want to do mozaza kudusura ariko utwara ngo bitawe sorry bukuru andushimira titatu ni wajya vuka ariko reka mvuge ijambo rimwe banyarwanda bacu n'inchuti z'abanyarwanda ibyo dukora tworeza ibihumbi 200 by'amadorari ku mwaka bituva muri twebwe n'inchuti zo muri Canada on a volunteer basis so let me challenge you nkuko president president Kagame abikora on behalf of a government reka tubikore as a community government hi kore yonyine oh yeah murakoze we love you so much Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Your Excellency, there was one question that was asked about how much of the Rwandan GDP is spent on science and technology. Would you like to respond to that? I'll also remind yes, people. I, I, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I will be brief. First of all, to, to raise that point um, behind it there is the importance of science and technology and how people should focus on it. But there is also a reality when it comes to Rwanda, even the overall national budget is not uh, big because of uh, the size of the country and the economy. So I will not give a specific uh, a number, but I answer it in a way that uh, it gives a, a picture of what it is. One, we focus on science and technology. We know it is important, it's a priority, and from the beginning we've done that. And we do it through education. And education is uh, a sector that comes uh, uh, at the top as a priority where we put uh, a big chunk of uh, national budget. It's education, it's health, it's uh, infrastructure, understandably, and agriculture, and many things. So as part of education where science and technology falls and uh, that sector helps to highlight the importance of science and technology, takes um, close to 15%, which is very huge. The big chunk of the budget for education is about 15%. So within that, there is a, another big chunk, therefore, of science and technology, among many other things within just one single sector. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. We do have two more questions in this room. The people should already have mics. Excuse me. Marcuse, Yakuwa, President of the Nomania, finally, when your microphone, do have you seen ni mazina yanje nitwa kwizera Landry ndi president wa Banyarwanda batuye muri Men aho bari bakoma mashi mu byukuri nta kibazo mfite ubwo no kubashimira uburyo mukomeza gwa gaciro diaspora igihe cyose tubakeneye mu kwa mutu ubonera umwanya mukanatwibutse ko dufite uruhare mu kugira ngo tugitera imbere mu gihugu cyacu kandi turabizeza ko tutazaba tenguha byumwe hari ko abanyarwanda batuye muri men tuifatanyijemo na ambassade twafashe twemeye ko tujye gukorana na karere ka Gisagara kugira ngo tugafashe kuzamura 
imibereho myiza abaturage muri gahunda yashyizweho na leta yinga ku muryango ndetse tunazamuye no bubare w'abantu bazabona meet wells ni mu rwego kugira ngo nubwo tuzatuka hera hano tutayibagirwa abo bacu basigaye nyuma ikindi ndagira ngo mbashimire kandi nibutse abari hano bose yuko imyaka 30 ishize nyuma gato ya genocide habarwaga imfubyi zigera ku 1400 zaya zashizwe inyuma na genocide harimo nabari babuza ababyeyi kwera babuza ababyeyi bavuye baguye kwitabaro kujya bagaruke genocide izo mfubyi zose zari sifite ibikomere ku mubiri ndetse no ku mutima ariko kubera ubuyobozi bwawe hagiye yo program nyinshi zibafasha byango bige ubu benshi bo muratanga uruhare rwawo kugira ngo igihugu gitere imbere kandi benshi bari hano Thank you. Please, uh, please wrap up. Mumaga umakeya hari ashaka gutanga. Hari wabavuze ikibanza twabonye ko mu Rwanda ari kibazo cy'indwara zo mu mutwe cyangwa se health care uh, mental health problems by professional I'm a psychiatric nurse and uh, I'm a survivor of the genocide and I have seen how this is affecting the whole nation in general. And I would like to emphasize that the government could put more efforts into uh, uh, pro uh, helping those who are suffering, because as now we have moved from uh, the stage where we're suffering, now we have stability, those problems that are coming on the surface. And we are seeing this in our own families. Muri Machirero, Haruakuze Kuata and Zichivanza, do the initiative, Namandi Banyarwanda Bachea, Tosha Kuba Kibitaro. Bivura abanyarwanda ariko cyane cyane tugafocusinga kuri mental health Twasabye ikibanza twe twarakiguze ubu ngo turagifite ariko turajya ngo tumaze inzu dukora na ministere turajya ngo tubasabe hamwe nabandi batekereza nkanje ese ubishoboye akagura ikibanza ahantu runaka initiative ya government yo yabiye kugira ngo noneho tube benshi kubera ko needs zirahari tuzibona mu bice bice bitandukanye ugoruka mu Rwanda si ibitaro bitandukanye nagiye mu kizere ngera kuri solid minds ariko haracyari icyuho kandi naganire n'ababishinzwe harimo Dr Darius ushinzwe sector ya mental health muri ministeri uh, ya minisante tubona yuko aba investors iyo area barayibagiwe kandi ejo twize yuko our, our entrepreneurs they see our answers they out of problems when you see an, an issue, that's when you find the solution. It was a in a jam become a no wose, I recall to convey nature now with my other fashion, could you run off to go shachi, to show good in bed, Changa Mutan and Vedio Brocos. Thank you, thank you. Your Excellency, we can take one more question if your time allows. Okay. So we'll take one more question in this room. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Okay. Okay, we'll take a question from this side. Check, check. Hello, hello. Oh, wow. Okay. Your Excellency, um, I'd like to start and be like everybody else. Instead of a question, it's a vote of thanks. Erega, oya, mwenyuve wanyarwanda, nyakuwa wa Presida wa Republika, iwazo bjinshi mngara wikoze kuburijo uungu uu. My name is Iana Ruheta and I'm a final year biochemistry student. I had the privilege to sit on the healthcare panel today and to make us understand how revolutionary the healthcare system in Rwanda has been. Um, like this? Gurcha? Okay, perfect. Um, I really want to highlight how revolutionary the healthcare system in Rwanda has been. In 1994, how much do you think was the Rwandan life expectancy? According to the World Bank in 1994, the life ex expectancy of Rwandans at birth was 44.6 years. Now, in 2022, the same study was done again, and guess where Rwandans are now? In 2022, 
Life expectancy in Rwanda at birth is 66.5 years. This means that in, the, in only two decades, Rwanda was able to expand its people's life expectancy by 20 years, something that has rarely been seen in the world. So, Rwanda Rwiza, Rwanda Dukund. Healthcare in Rwanda holds no bounds and has boundless opportunities. Please make sure so, to Abana, get to the point. Yes, make I'm getting quick. to the point. I'm getting to the point. Yes, please. Abana we have a lot of yes, Abana we have a mahanga. Dukora tu kuibuka. Dukora tu ranzwe. Ninda nga gachiro wa duhae. Kandi. Jirichiza rabana bawe. Tuza garuka. Gukomeza kukubaka. No kugute zimbele. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. His Excellency has been very generous. We're going to take three more questions. We'll take one question from right here, and we'll get two questions from right there. And one more from here. That will be all. So let's get, let's, let's give a mic, the three people standing right here at the front, and one person right here. Okay. Please get a mic to... Thank you, thank you. Uh, Your Excellency, Mr. President, and everyone here. Um, I'm Michael Luongo. I'm a PhD student and also an instructor at Purdue University School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. And if things fall into place, I'll teach for a little while at UTB um, in Kigali. My question, I'll just get right to it, is um, where does tourism fit into Rwanda's future. It's how I know and how I was invited here. The embassy had invited me to this event, Charles and Vital, uh, because, because I will be maybe teaching education about tourism there. Um, the sports talk hinted at tourism, but can you tell me more details about where tourism and inviting foreigners to experience Rwanda fits into the future of Rwanda? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll also remind people that we do have other leaders in the room. We have the Minister of Justice, Minister of Finance, Minister of State of Health, Minister of Youth and Arts, the Minister of State of Education, and others that you heard from earlier. So we can also direct questions to those people. Okay, let's hear from the two people right there. One more here, and that will be all for today. Uh, President Kagame, uh, my name is Adam DePico. I'm from Columbia University, SIPA, and uh, I have the privilege here today in working on a project with the RSSSB. And my question to you is touching upon uh, how to build a strong private sector in Rwanda as you look towards the next 30 years of economic growth and development. How can Rwanda position itself in the region, and what can Rwanda do to attract private sector growth and encourage foreign investment? And which international continental partners that you haven't partnered with thus far would be fitting partners to bring, gener uh, bring Rwanda forward in the next 30 years? Thank you, President. Thank you so much, and thank you for getting straight to the point. One more question there, and one question right here. Please give the lady a mic right there. Dawa Republika papa wabanyarwanda uri hano kuko nasenze imana kugira ngo nkubone nasabye ijuru ngo rizakumpa ariko ndakubonye imana ishimwe papa wanje nkuko haguruka ngo urwanda ni rukababare ukanga kwikiramwe umuntu cyababazwa nanje mpagurutse kubwa gahinda ku mwana wanje kandi nziko urwaniro kuri kandi urwanira gutsinda nagize akarengane ndi umunyarwanda kazi nitwaje amahoro na dine nagiye kubyara mfite randevu ya kubagwa kuko umwana akurikirana nari narabazwe ibitaro bimbira ko birambaga sambiriza mu gitondo banyambika sonde bigera samuna ni bataraza kumbaga umwana akaza gakubita umutwe kuri sonde ndatabaza kubera hari umuganga umwe 
barambira ngo baraje baraje baje sa 11 basanga umwana yarangije gusufrira mu matako bakuruza vantuzi bivira mu mwana wanje kubora ubwonko na ibitaro bya Faisal biranzi Dr David ni wa mukurikiranye kubwonka ambira ko umwana wanje atazare inzukwezi ariho ariko imana era muri inzu bagiye kuzuza imyaka 5 Imana yampaye umugisha wo kugera muri iki gihugu ubuzima bwari bukomeye nza kwa hano nkuko mu buzima bukomeye najya ga Faisal ariko naremeye nza mu mujyi uhenze kugira ngo nkurikirane ubuzima bw'umwana wanje muvuriza ku bitaro bikomeye bya Children National Washington nabo bambiye ko ubwo ngobwe bwaboze kuva ku munsi wa mbere avuka kugeza ku meza rindwe ntabwo yicara navuga ntareba na muvoma nimwe nagiye kurega mu rukiko rwa gasabo urubanza barurya mbireba kandi bimenyetso bigaragara bagakana ko batishije sonde kandi sonde bayambi kugiye kubagwa nyakubaho narajuriye nubwo ndaha ari kubushobozi bwanje nako bwa binyemereraga uvuga rimwe bigatungana kandi ikibazo winjiye muragikemura cyaka kukuri kugaragara jane igikomere cyo kumva ko mu bushobozi buke mfite ngomba gufasha abana babana no bumuga nk'ubu ngubu mu karere ka gicumbi mfite abana bagera kuri 12 mfasha mu mafaranga make nshobora kubona nkibuka ko kurya umusokoro hari cyo wabafasha nkabohereza mu mushahara wose nabona kugira ngo babone pampa abana babana no bumuga ababyeyi tubatwara hahamutse nta kiza tubona mu maso yacu harimo abo bita bama debile numva hakeneye uburenganzira nubundi bufasha bushoboka ku buryo ni umwana wanjye yarenganurwa ntago nzabikora ngenyere numva nakora ikigo kitwa rogani gifasha abo bana babana no bumuga nyakuba wa president Murakoze ikibazo cyanjye cyari cyo nkuko haguru kurengera urwandu kazo bawaje gushaka abanyarwanda bawe hano nange mpagurukiye umwana wanje murakoze imana ibaho umugisha Thank you so much and we'll take a last question from right here let's get the mic right here at the front Mr. President, we Washingtonians want to welcome you back to America. It's great to have you here. And my question is about bilateral relations between the United States and Rwanda. And would you please tell us here in the audience, here us, we, we Americans and also all the Rwandans here, both from your country and also from the diaspora, what can you tell us about the positive relations in the last few years between Rwanda and the United States? Give us some examples of those positive aspects and how you see that relationship going forward. And also, we would be so interested in any communications that you can talk about that you've had good communications with our President Joe Biden mm -hmm. and those good relations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your Excellency, if it is okay with you, we didn't give a chance to the people in the other room to ask a question, so if it is okay with you, I'll give them an opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. We will take one question from the Woodrow Wilson room. I know we have so many questions in here. Your Excellency, as you can see, four years of questions, so we need to have you here more often. Let's take one question from the Woodrow Wilson room and we'll give His Excellency a chance to respond to these questions. Mr. President, good afternoon. Miriwe, my name is Jonathan Weaver. I'm the president of the Pan-African Collective. Its objective is to strengthen relationships between the United States and the people of Africa, specifically in Rwanda. We're working with an organization there in Rwanda uh, to involve ourselves in partnership to help early childhood development centers, 
but also economic empowerment in terms of the donation of cows and goats to vulnerable families. And we've done that now for a number of years. I would like to know what is your vision, what is your vision with respect to non-governmental organizations such as ours going forward? What would be the priorities for us? Because we want to know exactly what the needs are specifically in Rwanda and how we can best partner with you and the people of Rwanda. Thank you so much. Your last question. Last question. Last question. One last question. Your Excellency, I'll give you an opportunity to respond to the questions that were asked. Um, to begin with, um, I talked about, about tourism. I answered it in a few words. I think just to say tourism is uh, uh, important to us, a very critical part of our economy. We want to promote it. We do everything possible for that. Uh, so the answer is, it's important. I think that summarizes everything. Then uh, the same thing about the private sector. And I'm, I'm, I'm being very brief on this, on this type of questions, just because I know there have been discussions going on since yesterday and this morning, and they're going into these details. I think that is what the purpose was. Uh, so for me to go back and go through what was discussed yesterday, probably it is not the best use of our time. Uh, so the private sector also is very important and we do everything uh, we can to highlight that importance and uh, again, private sector is key and we have to do uh, what we can to, to highlight it. Bilateral relations between the US and Rwanda, probably the most difficult to answer. Uh, 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 I'm still learning diplomacy that's why I'm struggling to find uh, But let me describe it like this. Our relationship is good. So that, that says everything. Uh, the same thing with the... Now, for US, uh, Rwanda, Africa, the question to do with the NGOs, our policy is to allow any organization, any institution that wants to work in Rwanda with government or private sector to be able to do so. Um, we just insist on making sure that there is good coordination so that the people don't come and do anything, anyhow, whatever they want, and uh, irrespective of government policy or the needs of people. So to be able to be more productive in what you are doing, we insist on coordination, simple coordination. That, uh, therefore, builds on... Uh, Accountability, you must be accountable to um, the country system and what you are doing. Um, so, NGOs are welcome, but uh, there is a certain discipline that is expected uh, for all of us. Government has to have uh, clear expectations and uh, policies and uh, 
to be able to work with other entities that also uh, respond in the same way. I think that's, that's all I can say. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, and thank you for, for taking your time to be with us today. It truly has been an honor. Okay. So, we've come to the end of this function. Thank you for being here with us. Remember that there's a lot of entertainment. There's a dinner that is coming up today. There's lots of opportunities to network. There's a career corner back there with lots of companies who've come from Rwanda for young people, young talent that are looking to go back home to intern or get jobs. There's opportunities to connect with people. So make sure you check those out. Thank you so much again, Your Excellency, for being with us today. Okay, we can have young people dance again, why not? <laughs> His Excellency would like the young people to dance again. Please, come on. <laughs> In the meantime, we can have some music from our very own DJ Toxic. Ne 
murakoze cyane nkuko byavuzwe ngira ngo nyakuba presida wa republika yadutumiye ku meza iryo tangazo ryatanzwe ariko nanone hari service ziri hanze twakomeza abazikeneye bakazihabwa dusogonyejwe rero umuganura buriya mu kwezi kwa kabiri niko bigenda uwo bawitwa umurorano muryoherwe 